welcome to the 27th Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, we'll start tonight as we always do with the Selectmen's liaison report to open it up for public comment. We'll hear from our uh, town manager and assistant town manager, including uh, Ken Ellis, our director of administrative services. Uh, in terms of the subject matter for tonight, we have a hazard mitigation plan that was distributed that we'll review and adopt tonight. We'll talk about a change of officer at uh, Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. We'll open up discussion around a, sem excuse me, a cell tower project uh, to wit the scope, the uh, potential public process, et cetera. Look at TBW policies. Talk about a uh, debt sale that the town was successful in recently achieving um, some very low borrowing costs. Um, proposed to extend the sunset clause for the Climate Advisory Committee <coughs> to the end of the year. And then go to the subject matter of the VASC, which I think met yesterday. Is that right, Dan and Barry? Yes. Uh, number of new appointees and uh, incumbents for boards and committees. We'll do an approval of minutes, and then barring any other uh, topic, um, we'll adjourn. With that, I'll open for uh, liaison reports to my right, Mr. Holbrook. Uh, I have nothing for this time. Dan? Uh, no report, Mr. Chairman. Barry? A couple of things. I attended the library uh, trustees meeting. Uh, last week um, and actually a lot of stuff that I was going to talk about they sent to us in this little packet mm -hmm. a lot of the activities that are going on this summer the place is packed um, they're doing a lot of uh, new programming bringing new people into the library um, they have raised a lot of money from uh, donors which is a good thing um, and uh, so they're really um, they're really <laughs> cranking one thing that will conversation guys um, one thing that they asked us to look into um, for maybe per perhaps November town meeting is to tweak the um, uh, their their fund which um, as you recall they they're able to collect fines and things that goes into their trust fund um, the way it's situated right now is that they are only allowed to spend it on materials but a lot of the funds that go in there um, are for if people use the, co the copy machine or things like that um, so they can't spend the money on some of the things that they have costs on. They can only spend it on books and materials. So they've asked us to take a look at pot potentially tweaking some of the uses that are in their funds. So I um, hadn't had a chance to talk to Bob about that, um, but seems like a reasonable request. Um, the other thing um, I did um, with Dan attending the VASC, we'll learn more about that later. Tons of new appoint uh, tons of appointments, reappointments. Um, and then also last week I attended um, actually with, uh, with Chairman Arena, uh, a meeting here in this room um, with the rabbi from Bedford, some of the people from HRAC and other folks around just sort of beginning to come to terms and dealing with a strategy for um, some of the graffiti, swastika graffiti that's come around town. So that was a, a preliminary meeting, a lot of good ideas, a lot of energy in the room, a lot of positive stuff um, that I'm really excited that, that, you know, that we're trying to tackle as a town. So, more on that as it unfolds this summer. Good, thank you. Andy. Yeah, so uh, thanks, John. So I am um, liaison to the Climate Advisory Committee and the Town Forest Committee, both of which met a uh, week before last, and I was out uh, for surgery, so I couldn't attend, but I contacted the chairs, and they gave me brief three, three bullet point items that uh, of what they're up to that I think the board might be interested in. The, you know, the Climate Advisory Committee is going over the plastic bag uh, regulation mm -hmm. possibilities, and um, at their meeting they went over what other towns have done in this regard. The chair of the Climate Advisory Committee met with the chair of the Bylaw Committee um, so that their two committees can coordinate better on, on these bag <coughs> regulations, however they develop. And they have a pretty aggressive timeline. They're going to be working hard uh, this summer to have, by I think the end of the summer, a proposed bag bylaw. Um, the Town Forest Committee reported in um, that, you know, they have this project about dog etiquette in the Town Forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are going to try to educate the public by, uh, through, through an RCTV program that will focus on dog etiquette in the town forest. Um, Odor etiquette. Odor <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> or, or, yeah, yeah, I guess, right. Dogs will be dogs. dogs. Blame it on the dogs. Um, 
The, they also discussed some work that they have a con, uh, consulting forester uh, doing some work for the town forest. I think we all heard about that. They discussed that. Um, and they are deferring ch something of interest to, to campers, perhaps. They're deferring charges of fees for the use of the town forest at this time. They need to resolve a number of outstanding issues before they move forward with that. Um, I also attended a school committee meeting um, and was was the only selectman there, so I'll just, uh, it was interesting because it really uh, confirmed what you all were saying, um, when can they get us a number to help with, you know, us develop an override, and they looked at it eight ways of Sundays, and, and it kept coming out mid-January, just like Bob had, had noted. Um, mid-January, mid-January, mid-January is about the soonest they can come out up with a, a, a good number that has the precision and the reliability that John had mentioned that the voters are going to be looking for. Um, so that was interesting. That's it. Uh, for myself, in addition to the, um, the meeting with the Clergy Association and, and Rabbi Abramson, um, I also met with uh, the Reading North Reading uh, town managers on the subject of MWA and water for North Reading. And then on the 20th, I met um, with the FinCom and Bylaw Appointment Committee and appointed the uh, 2017 appointments, which would expire in 2020 for both those groups. Do you have a full vote on both? We do. Okay. Any new people? Uh, no, both incumbents, both three up. So there'll be some familiar faces. There were three on FinCom, I think, but all three? Um, uh, there's, there is, no, I, I believe there's eight, and I believe there's a full slate of nine. Okay. Um, with that, I'll open up for any public comment. If you have a comment, please stand and give us your address. Mr. Brown. Cemetery director yeah. is leaving us. Okay. Thank you, Bill. What's that? Yeah, very soon. I think yesterday we got the letter. He, he talked to the board tonight, and I guess he's given his resignation. Okay. Something like. He took visit to say hello. Wasn't that productive? <laughs> <laughs> it's hello, goodbye. <laughs> like everybody else, John, uh, money. He, was, he took a thirteen thousand dollar year cut to come here. Very good. Any other public comment? Nancy. Um, I'm going to give this to Caitlin. Nancy Doctor, 371 Hill Street. This is actually a copy of our agenda for the Board of Health meeting on June 21st. And I'm giving it to you because I was confused how it triggered sending a police officer to our board meeting. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there was no, um, uh, I guess, sharing with the board any imminent threat to public safety. So you cannot see the officer when you look at our tape of our board meeting because he actually stood behind the board members. Um, while this is confusing, my biggest concern actually is the fact that the health department has lost three employees in the past six months. Our health agent, our long-term inspector, who I believe spent her entire career in Reading, and most concerning, our public health nurse less than two weeks ago. We've reached out the board to both of our liaisons to ask that you do some outreach to our health agent, to inquire as to retention. I would ask the board to reach out to all three of these employees because not everything is actually related to salary in terms of resignations. Um, it's a serious concern about retention and I would ask that the board um, identify the problems and come up with some type of solutions. Great. Thank you, Nancy. That, that is being worked, but there, we may not be replacing all those positions with people. We may be looking at consultants for at least one of those. Excuse me. So we are considering all that. All right. Any other public comment? Yes. Um, Michelle Sampy, 75 Glenmere Circle. Um, I actually, I had a request and a question. So the request is, I actually walked to the end of your meeting two weeks ago. I had to leave. And um, the discussion that you had about the, the, um, timeline in right. regards to the budget. And then I watched the school committee meeting yes. and my takeaway also was January 19th is pretty much 
for the earliest. So my request is um, for your board to consider voting to commit to the April 3rd um, ballot question so that the community knows that the override is a definite. I completely understand that the whole process you have to go through to determining a member is separate from that. So that was the request. And then the question was, if my memory serves me correctly, in FY17, the projected increase for health insurance was 8%, and I'm wondering if that actual increase has come in, and we know if it's over or it's under. I think Bob had the number, and I don't remember what he had in his head. Do you remember, Matt? I think it was a little less than that. Yeah, but not much. But, but not seven point something. Right. It was yeah, close. So it came in pretty close. Right. Um, to, to the first point, I think January is still far enough away where I still have hope that between now and then we can find a way to squeeze a, a week or two. It's a little hard to project with any sort of accuracy what's going to happen in six months. And, but I understand entirely there's a schedule, there's a process, and it's out of our control, but we can provide some encouragement. And who knows? As we said, it only has to be approximate. Um, but my request is that this board, because you're the only board that can vote to put, put it on the ballot as a question, so right now, it's a maybe override for April 3rd. So if your board actually takes a vote and your board does vote that it will definitely be a ballot question on April 3rd, I think that that's very helpful for the community because then we don't, we don't wonder, like, is it going to happen or isn't? I think one of the reasons we've come out so quickly with the uh, schedule is to convey to the public that we're quite deliberate and this is, this is um, our intention is to drive forward on that schedule. So while you may want the certainty of an announcement, I, the conclusion is we're working along those lines to get to that point with the certainty and the precision that the, the, the folks are going to need. The certainty is the closing of the warrant. That's not going to happen until January. So you can't vote? Just save the date kind right. of thing that, we I think do, that's what I, we, I think that's what she might be talking yeah, about is just to say that, right. you know, w we can say, I think, with fair, with fair, you know, much certainty, um, that we're going to put something on April third. Um, you know, obviously, the not, the more important thing is what is the people are actually going to be voting on, and that's obviously needs to to germinate and and we'll get closer to that. But I think your if I understand your question, it's you know, are we going to put? It, will there be an will there be an override question on the ballot on April third? Exactly. Think, yes. I, you know. I mean, I speak for myself, I think, we, but even in all the discussions, I think we're really driving in that direction. So I, I, I would say that um, that's something that people can, can count on. We, we know very well the state the town's in, and all the things we said last year in terms of fire, police, public safety are, are more so this year with retirement. There's no question in my mind we're driving to that. So in terms of a save the date, that's already in my mind a given. The, the amount and the warrant article itself are the things we got to get to, and for that we just need a bit more data. I think we will be successful getting some data from school committee earlier than the 19th of January. It may not be perfect, but it'll be their priority list, I hope, because that's what the public wants to hear so that they can make a judgment. It's not just the dollar amount, it's you know this program, that program, this teaching, that teacher, whatever it happens to be. Um, the same we'll do on the town side, so there's some <coughs> subject matter behind it. It's not just a request. Right. I, I think though, what Mr. Berman said is what I'm really asking is that I guess it's can you take the vote to commit as a board to April 3rd? After we close the warrant. Not until you, so you cannot do that. I mean, you can commit you to commit. Do that. The warrant closes with the amounts. But, and so those got to go hand in hand. So you have to have the amount in order to close the warrant the to say that you're putting a ballot question on? That's what we had to do the last time. I would hope there's no question we're working in good faith. Oh, I'm not questioning that at all. I think that it's from the last override, it was it was very challenging for a lot of people to wrap their head around the fact that we were going to actually have an override. So my question more is, can you commit to that date outside of the process of getting the number? Hey, Laura, go ahead. Hi, uh, um, as you know, I'm Laura, the town clerk. Uh, it, and from an election law perspective, if they vote to put that question on the ballot, they have to. They can't back out. So you don't want to do that until they're ready to close the warrant. Why, though? That's election law. You do it once, and you do it when you're ready, and it's locked and loaded at that point. You can't commit to commit to do it. You do it once, and... Oh, so you can't. Okay. 
but you should you should conclude from the work we put in so far that's the direction we're you should going. have everybody this circling up April 3rd on right. their calendars yeah. and and, yeah. and we're going to manage no toward that date okay. I, I, I think that you can count on I think the town can count on everybody here seems committed to putting an override on the ballot for April 3rd and and we're starting to flesh out I, I when we'll continue from what I heard from the town manager Every couple of weeks, we'll have a discussion about the strategy about getting to uh, flesh out more of the strategy of getting to. Uh, was it actually a published schedule? Well, the the was the published schedule a um, was that an override schedule or a budget schedule? Everything. It's the it's overall kind of part and parcel. The you know the whole works. Yeah, uh, um, I'll have to go and take the, another look at that. My impression was that that was the the FY19 budget. It is, yeah, but, but, that, but that, that has to complete to get to of the course, I, under, I, yeah. I totally get that, I totally get that. But I think to uh, Michelle's point that people are looking towards an open um, strategy for an override, an open process for a strategy towards an override. And I, and I believe that's gonna happen. I mean, the, the town manager sort of steered us in that direction by saying at the, at the end of the last meeting when everyone had pretty much gone uh, that that the, the topic will come up every couple of weeks it's going to be something we're going to have to be <coughs> hammering away at so when the school committee does come out with a number we're ready to 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 go I forward I, did, I didn't realize that you had to have the number to commit I didn't know like I understand you can't commit to commit I think it confused everybody. That's fine. No, it's, it's, no that's, that's a date. That's, that's, that, that, exactly that, right. that's a date. You know, that's the date that's circled, and everything goes backwards from there. So. Okay. Any other public comment? Matt, did you have any comments? No, other than the fact that I'm here, I'm um, pitch hitting for Bob and Jean tonight. Um, if, there's, if there's any questions, but I don't have any report. Yeah, I know Bob's out of pocket, so thank you for stepping in. Sure, no problem. Okay, um, we'll move right to the uh, first article of discussion, which is the. Um, the hazard mitigation plan in your Thursday packet was a 102 page uh, document, I believe. I spent mm -hmm. most of one Friday yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. And you have to approve that. That's just a revision. Um, I think I didn't see Julie. Julie Mercier may be in the building if there's any questions. I think she was planning to come at 730. But it's just a revision to the plan. Um, your vote will complete that. We have to revise the plan every few years. Um, and. Like you said, it's in your package. It's here, 60 pages or so. Can we maybe table this to some? Yeah, I was going to say, why don't we table this to Julie? I had a couple of questions for her as well. Okay, yeah, she's she's coming at 7:30, so we could table that. We could go to uh, approve debt sale or uh, approval of minutes. Isn't that I think we need Sharon for that. Yeah, oh, Sharon's good. coming down later for the debt sale. All right, guys, we're going too quickly. We're ahead yeah, of schedule. Yeah, you guys are making good time tonight. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's do anybody that. have any questions? We do the change of officer. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we can do that one. We can do that. Right. Side B. All right. So at, An at Anthony's uh, coal-fired pizza, there's a change of management uh, in our package uh, this evening. Was a discussion on the change of officer. I think we have a prepared motion to that effect. Yes, mm. we do. Mm -hmm. uh, move that the board of selectmen approve the change of officer slash beneficial interest application for an annual all alcoholic beverages restaurant license. Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza of Reading LLC, doing business as Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza, 48 Walker's Brook Road, <coughs> Reading, Massachusetts. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. okay. Andy seconds. Um, any further discussion? I will note that the police department had no objections. Uh, Correct. Yeah, they were fairly ordinary and customary. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Five zero. Okay, guys, that was two minutes. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the minutes are in the hard copy that I gave you tonight. Yep. At the very end. Okay. Right here. I need a second to uh, uh, Just a question, a couple questions on the minutes. I speed read them, um, and I, and just some um, probably typos on the third page. Um, under the human rights resolution, the first paragraph, Mr. Arena read the preamble and noted that it would be, I think it's placed before the board. Um, it would be there. Small thing. 
and then the the paragraph after that, I think he said it would be. Mr. Berman said it would be more effective, not affected. Although it could be affected too, I suppose. But I think affected. Affected. Is yeah. Um, those, and then the the last thing I had. Sorry for jumping in, John. I should have waited for you to recognize. Uh, is at the very end we had a brief, maybe five minute discussion on. Um, Bob walked us through the the budget slash override. Um, schedule and so there was a little discussion about that that's not in the minutes and then also about um, now of course the name of it is skipping my mind the lottery um, oh, the, uh, uh, Kino. Kino. Kino there was a brief discussion about that if yeah. that could be added in yeah. um, and that's all I, that's all I got uh, the motion on the uh, there was a motion the on the Kino too that was, there was so yeah. this is two weeks ago not last week's Right. Uh -huh. so there was no Kino. Okay, in all right. There Four was weeks a, ago. There was a, there was a please add Kino to the oh, yeah, next yeah, right. agenda. Yep, yep. yep. But oh, the okay. actual Kino oh, vote was last yeah. week's, and these are yep. from two weeks ago. So this ago. is two meetings ago. Yes. This is two meetings. I retract yes, those. This is May 30th. That's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a slightly behind on my minutes. Page three of the minutes. Uh, yep. The vote to pass was 3 2, not 3 0 2. Did you guys abstain or vote again? Are they opposed? Yes. I thought so. Any chance, opposing. Any chance to get these minutes in the packet on Thursday? Yes, I just wasn't done with them. That's why okay. they were here. All right, thank you. <coughs> and, and actually, likewise, too, uh, above the, the – on Mr. Berman's two, two, amendment, one. it was 221. Two, 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 one. It's four against abs abstain. That's correct. Right. Yep. Two, two, one. That's the English system where the abstention would be in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Right the dates, so. Any other uh, proposed changes to the minutes? No. If not, I'll. I'll uh, all those in favor of the minutes as amended? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Julie, um, Hi. Here? I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Way ahead of you. No, we were ahead of where we're talking about the hazard mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. And did you have any formal presentation tonight? Did I do not have a formal yeah. presentation tonight. I'm uh, here to answer any questions. I, only the questions I had is it seemed like the 2017 <coughs> mitigation steps, they're all locked and loaded in the capital plan? Um, a number of them are. Ryan probably knows more about that than I do. So there are a number of cases where the drainage pipes were insufficient diameter, like fair, fair view and... Um, yeah, that one I think is pushed out quite a ways in the capital. I thought it was this year. Uh, in table 29. Uh, I think it's like page <coughs> 90 or something. Okay. I tried to find it. Um. <laughs> I was just surprised at how many um, capacity issues are kind of distributed through the town. Mm -hmm. Page 90, you said? I think so. I th in the 90s, maybe. It's labeled as 110, number 110 in the report. Okay. It's going to be a while. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has a quicker way. the box up there. Is yeah, that? here. Yeah, that'll get you close. Okay. Yeah. Up, yeah, you, well, I have to actually ask. Like right up here, Matt. Yeah. 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 Which one are you asking about, John? Uh, oh, Sunnyside yeah. and yeah. Fairview. Yeah. 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 Like Elsewhere in the document, it describes it in the fi yeah. in the fiscal 19 capital plan. Yeah. I'm trying to find yeah. it. Sorry, what was the number? Sunnyside and Fairview. Okay. 110. That, that's 12 pages in the PDF. Okay. Not just, not just the report. Yeah. yeah. Scroll down. It's actually just a little bit down there, yeah, yeah. farther okay. down. Yeah. Got you closer. Keep going. Right yeah. there. Stop. Oh, Back it's up. the first one. Yeah. First one there. So that's Plain described design. as benefit high, cost high, and priority high. And I saw elsewhere, and I'm struggling to find it now, that it said 2017 in this document. And then this table says, or the table just following this says 2024. Which of the dates is correct? Do you think the 24 date is correct? Further date, that's correct. I don't believe it's budgeted in for this year at all. That requires an extensive study on that capacity issue. Or to 
for sunny, sunny side. Primarily to match the capacity, so you don't put a bottleneck downstream. Um, that drainage in particular needs an increase in capacity. I think to um, maybe 60 inches or so. That's what we haven't designed it yet, but that's I think what it's calling for. The only other question I saw is on page one. I'm sorry to say, but there was a there's a typo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you go to the page mark number one, which is physical page nine. Um, so just type nine in that box. Go to the bottom. So it says 18, 614.97,000. I think you want 18,000, right? See the difference? Ooh, watch it. Um, this says 187 million. That makes sense. 18, makes no. That's a violation. Right. <clears throat> I don't know what they mean by that. So that's, that's this is in millions, right? That's yeah. Mm -hmm. So that should be in thousands, but that's in point. Right. That's the only thing I, I think that's, isn't that a decimal? I was looking closely at that. After having a quick it, heart attack, <laughs> I thought. Um, I thought that was eighteen million thousand. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Huh. Hmm. No, that is so. Eighteen thousand. So eighteen thousand thousand is eighteen million, whereas one hundred eighty-seven million is one hundred eighty-seven million. See the difference? <laughs> I have a few questions for MAPC. I've noticed some other typos, so yeah. I'll add this to the list. I know what they mean. It's just a typo. Yeah. Well, are we going to be able to adopt this with, you know? I think it's a it's yeah. simple error. I think if it's like yeah, a typo. Yeah, we can include that. Yeah. yeah, I think we can adopt it. Other than that, I didn't. Talking know. about dollars. I understand oh, that. <laughs> I mean, that's not a you know that's not a small typo. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean they're asked they're they're. Those are damage estimates, aren't they? Yep. Sorry. They're, they're just damage estimates, and they're so they're not spending. It's just estimates of what the potential damage is. My only question is, eighteen thousand dollars isn't a whole lot of money from a hurricane. So I think they actually do mean potentially millions of dollars. See, it's just the units of measure are kind of weird. I think it should be eighteen point six so million. <laughs> So that sure. is, I think, 18. I think, I think, I think that's 186 million. <coughs> well, no, well, it's not wrong. It's up by, it's <laughs> it's it's up by yeah. I mean, as it's uh, just the same units of measure. Yeah. 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 I think as it stands, it's 18, 18 point. Narrative million. is very weak. But, but, but yeah. I, it just is. In the next paragraph, they use million and they mean it, and it makes right. sense. Yeah, just no, use the I, same one. I couldn't follow what they I, were trying to say. Yeah. That, that's all. That's the only comment I had. I went through the whole document. It took me two and a half hours to go yes. through it. So, and there's some repetitive. There, there you know, are several sections, particularly where you talk about the weaknesses, where it's repeated. Is, yeah. is, it, is that by intention? I didn't. It, it appears to me um, to be a cut and paste that was going on here. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, we're asked to adopt the plan that they're presenting, and you know, they're cutting and pasting and not proofreading. Right. And I would just like to clarify that MAPC like did. 99% of the work on this. I just did the coordination on the town side. So. That's, it's um, real clear, Julie. And I did that's read it, and I did find some typos, but I didn't feel like going back and having them edit the whole document. It's probably enough to get an email to just correct the detail yeah. and you know, attach it. You don't need to have them reissue it. Should we make a motion just to make that correction for the Mondays there? Just ask them to clarify what this paragraph means. Yes. I, my only comment. I had, a, I had a, a comment and a question. I think for a document of this size, I, you know, uh, it's not unusual to find, no. unfortunately, those type of typos. And I think it's they may be following a template that requires them to repeat themselves over and over again. I mean, that's just a guess. But the question I had is sort of a, uh, on page 74, they talk about a flooding threat at the Texaco gas station. Um, I think it was a 1%. They rated it as a run one percent risk. Um, You're talking about PDF page seventy four. Uh, huh. 
Let me see. Well, number 74 in the I bottom. Think 74, 74, 74, in the 74 in the document. This is probably a question for the DPW folks, which which we can wait on. There's 74 there, yeah. Um, but flooding at a gas station is, you know, is a could could result in, in a fair amount of uh, contamination in in that area. So so do you know if if DPW Plans to one more Matt, keep going. Yeah, right there. It's right there. there. The one percent the annual chance. That just means that it's in the one hundred year floodplain, which obviously is right. is still a concern, but yeah. um, just to clarify what one percent annual chance of flooding means. It's the doc page mark seventy four in the doc. Eighty eighty two in the PDF. Yeah. yeah. And it's Motiva Enterprises, Texaco Gas Station, 1% annual chance of flooding. Um, yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm used to being the chair of the Board of Health, so, so I, I'm having trouble getting out of that okay. mode. Okay. Uh, yes, Steve. Who, who is Motiva Enterprise, Texaco? Is that now the shell across the Mahonda dealership? And that's definitely in the flood zone. Though. It doesn't give a street address. It gives a family. That's probably a more effective way to actually give addresses. Names and businesses change, so calling it something right. that no one recognizes seems rather silly. Yeah, but 35 Walker's Road Drive. Well, it's probably a, is that a parcel number? Maybe, but if you're going to give it a name, give it a name yeah. that you Well, it's got it. a creek be running behind it, so it's got to be the one. Yeah. But if you had a parcel number or a street address and you described it as a gas station, It'd be much easier. Yeah. yeah. It's like calling it the Atlantic supermarket. Right. It's not going to work out. Right. Yeah. Um, so to echo Andy, Andy's comments, this feels like to some extent it's um, – this could have been a lot tighter. Um, maybe it's the style of these things. I've done risk mitigation <coughs> plans before. They're usually pretty tight because they're, they're meant to be acted upon. Um, as you said, Julie, this is done by MAPC, so it is what it is. <coughs> um, any other comments from the board before we entertain a vote, John? Just because it's, it is what it is, because it's MAPC, in my opinion, doesn't say that we should embrace it. I mean, and, you know, it's it's theoretically something that you should should be a living document for use. I mean, that's the point, and it's our job to review it to see if it is such a document, and. Personally, I don't think it is. No, it's pretty weak. Um, I think it's really a weak document. Um, I mean, it may be government psychobabble, but, I, you know, that that doesn't mean it has to be okay with us. And I, this is, I realize this is not your work. I've seen your work. It's never like this. Um, so, you know, don't misinterpret what I'm saying here, Julie. Um, Would that mean we'd have to commend it back to someone? To fix it? I, I just intend to abstain on the vote here. I, it's not that I'm voting against this, but I can't embrace this yeah. based on what I read. Um, that's, I guess, what I have to say. Julie, what's the consequence of not accepting it or ignoring it? I'm not sure what the direct problem is. Uh, well, there's two consequences that immediately come to mind. One is that we've um, we retained them for $25,000, most, most of which has already been paid, so we don't have a lot of funds left to have them re-edit the document. Um, so if you wanted it fixed, we would do it in-house, which is if that's what you want, I'm happy to do that. Um, and then the second thing would be that we would be delaying FEMA adopting it, and so we would be outside of our five-year window to update it. We're already outside of that because we it was are. last out in 10, so you're yes. already out by – so that's not a new risk. It's not a huge issue um, It's because this really uh, puts us in the running for grants. Um, it doesn't impact our disaster relief funding or anything like that. Are there, grants that, are there grants that we're, like, imminently trying to apply for? There aren't or? any right now that we have – Applications pending for no, but but they they yeah, come out at a time. John, sorry. Um, so Julie, yes. we've hired them. Yes. We've paid them. Right. Most of the money. Right. I mean, in my world, it's typical that you get what you pay for, and if we've paid for it and we wanted a certain thing, right. I mean, shouldn't why should we have to? 
pay additionally for their weakness. You can push back on that. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just kind of the businessman in me. I mean, it, you know, if I'm going to pay $25,000 for something and I have an expectation that I'm going to have a living document that can be embraced and utilized, that's what I expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, and I'm, I'm really, I mean, I'm trying to walk a line here between putting an enormous amount of work on our own, right. on our own team, which I'm not interested in doing, and recognizing that this is not the work of our team. You know, this is the work that we paid for. And it's not very good. I mean, I would also say that I didn't actually get a chance to review it until this week um, because I was very busy with other things. So unfortunately, I didn't this get is not a complaint with earlier. Yeah, yeah no, this is no, not, not, not a complaint with you, Julie. Not, I, what, I, not remotely I understand a complaint. that. I'm just saying that in an ideal world, I could have provided comments earlier before we paid them. But did, I mean, did they get it to us? When, I mean, um, I mean, we, we did have a comment period in February. It was a 10 day period. That's what's required by FEMA. So we did that. It was on the website. Um, some people provided comments. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think pushing back. I mean, you said we paid most of the money, which means that we're we just got the invoice for. this week. Yes. No. So we haven't paid it yet, right? It's in process. We can push the we can yeah, push pause on that. What is this level of effort contracting, or did, was it a fixed firm fixed price? Um, it's a fixed price. So you got every recourse to go back and say it doesn't meet scope of work. Um, Maybe I'm exaggerating this. I don't know how everybody else. Well, feels. I think you're, you're hearing other concerns. Here. What did it look like before they started? Was so it we had a plan, the 2010 plan. Right. Was um, it substantially similar? With the I think it is substantially similar. <laughs> How much effort would it be to push for town resources to push back and say, hey, go fix the following five bullet points? How much? Probably not a big deal. I mean, I was emailing with the guys that did this earlier today. They're very accessible. Why don't we push pause on the payment? Okay. If we can. Just, okay. I'm not saying stop it, but just mm -hmm. hit pause. And um, I'm willing to mark it up and put my comments in. Would, would a provisional acceptance uh, be okay, subject to final? I don't want to overcomplicate it. Why don't, yeah. we, why don't we just do it once and get it in? All right. Um, Except I think we could adopt. Yeah. Um, I have my own comments, which I'll edit and send to Julie and to Matt. I don't know if the rest yeah, of the board feels similarly. Yeah. Um, why don't we do that by? I'll see how they're worded. Um, why don't we? Why don't we do that by um, our next meeting at latest? They'll be in other mm -hmm. words, they'll be in and, and ready for review by. Uh, let's so you don't want to do the motion. For it. Um, I don't know how you accept something that's subject to being amended, right? We do it in minutes, but we do the changes on the. Yeah, but, but the amendments already, are known. already have the, the amendments, amendments are known. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, right. be, I'd be inclined to pass on that. Okay. Any other comments from the board? An extra two weeks is not going to make yeah. it. No. Yeah. No. I mean, we just don't want to miss out on any grants, but I, I doubt there's any grants coming. I mean, is anything looming that you want to do in the next two weeks? Right. Not related to this, no. <laughs> I, there's always oh, something looming. Mr. Chair? There's yeah. always something looming. I, I agree with uh, John's concept that this should be a living document. Um, it would be great, a great, a good resource for the for the citizens. Um, I just don't think we're going to get that out of out of this process, unfortunately. Well, but the obvious error is an omission. Should yes. be correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think this is sort of a thing that we have to have so we can apply for grants. I mean, we got to just clean it up some. Yes. I mean, it, look, it's not going to get per It's not going to be perfect. I, I do that. think to some degree they use a template, um, as Andy mentioned, but we like can definitely make it tighter. But for example, it just what caught my eye was um, if you go to PDF slide 51, I was going through these tables, slide rows and rows of tables. You just go to 51 in the top, right? Yep. And then hit control minus minus. Hold, hold, press the control key down and hit minus minus twice. Minus minus. There you go. Good. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to take away from this table. It says it snowed, but there's no damage. I mean, these are supposed to be hazards that were reported. Is it just saying, yeah, it snowed that day? Is it meant to convey anything more than that? And there's four pages of this. Yes. Yeah. I just didn't know what to, and then at the end, it's got a token 40, if you go to the very end of it, it's got a 70,000, a $5,000 event, it sums to 4 million. I don't know what to, what to conclude of that. There's no, so what? Yeah. I mean, the, these are documents that are paid for by the town, John. 
I was to John's point. I mean, honestly, John's point. If I'm paying for something, I want to know what I'm getting, and I want to get it. I don't know what value this thing delivers, unless it's a pro forma thing that you need for. I think it may be. I mean, if you look at if you look at a standard uh, a 21E, uh, which you ask an environmental firm to do about you know. I've got I've got one building that I want to kind of just see what the risks are. Yeah. I get a 3,500 page document which basically lists every address within you know a half a mile, and it's like what what I don't need this, but it, that's just the format that it is. And I, my my feeling is is that this is this it falls into the same. And they're required by the the, the right. regulations. I don't know if that's the case for this. And some people, some poor sod, has to review all of those pages yeah. at the state. Yeah. Um, do we actually execute against this? Do we use it in any operational sense, this document? I think it complements the SEMP plan to some degree, but... I mean, do we crack this open at any This time? is not binding. I mean, it's not binding us to any action specifically. Um, do we crack it open? No. <laughs> so in other words, we got to buy poundage for 25000 right, You pay in order to be able to satisfy some regulation that allows us to apply for grants. Right. That's really what this is. Right. So in other words, they put a gun to our head and they say pay $25,000 and you do this and then you're allowed to do other stuff. Or you could do it yourself. You could do it yourself and then yep. she can't do anything else. And I believe that there was an effort to do this in-house before I came on. Um, and it just, it was just too well, much additional work. So that's why we went out so to- So they already own the, pro they already own the the pro forma. Right. right. But this was paid for by a grant, correct? We didn't pay for no, this. No, this was not no. paid for by a grant. This was not paid for by no. a grant. Paid not to my knowledge, no. Because I I, I, I thought I, I checked that, but obviously I think I don't know. No, I believe it was November that. town meeting of 2015 where the funds were allocated for this right. from the general fund. Yeah, the other, yeah I, I'm in the same place. So why don't we take this up, have all your comments in, in time so we can review them in our, in our next <coughs> meeting in two weeks, and we'll go through them then. And we'll take it from there, and we'll, uh, we'll pass on any uh, acceptance of this document tonight. Any other questions from the board? All right. Thank you, Julie. No problem. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's Sorry. not. Don't mean, mean, <laughs> you're not on trial here in no. any way. <laughs> no, I'm, um, I'm totally fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank I'll you. be back in two weeks. We can chat. Right, okay, then. That's good, Julia. Uh, if you want to do some of the appointments, uh, we're just waiting till eight o'clock. <coughs> so everybody that's not here. Let me get back to my uh, table of contents. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we could do appointments if the boards and okay. committees. Uh, sure. This is our annual uh, appointment reappointment process uh, for uh, all positions that are appointed uh, by the Board of Selectmen. I want to say at the outset, we have one vacancy on each of the uh, three very following very important boards. Uh, one vacancy full on the Zoning Board of Appeal, one on the Community Planning and Deve Development Commission, and one on the Conservation Commission. So we welcome uh, applicants to any or all of those positions. Those are very important boards who have a very important regulatory function. Uh, I'm going to sort of do these in serial blocks. There are a couple of additions I will have to what you see printed here. Uh, my notes from last night, we sort of bring everything together here. Uh, I'm going to add as my first uh, the Animal Control Appeals Committee, Tina Olson. Uh, now, when I make the motion, the understanding is it's the term for, through 63020, unless I've stated otherwise. Okay. But, so, move to appoint. Tina Olson to the Animal Controls Appeal Committee, uh, Damas Cowett to the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, Nick Pernice to the Zoning Board of Appeals Associate position for a term ending 6 30 19, uh, Harry Simmons to the Board of Registrars, David Zeke to the Climate Advisory Committee, Jeffrey Everson to the Climate Advisory Committee Associate membership for a term ending 6 30 19, uh, Elizabeth Klepeis to the commissioner, Commissioners of Trust Funds, Barry Berman to the Commissioners of Trust Funds, and Kevin Briere to the Associate Membership on the Commissioners of Trust Funds, term ending 630-19. We'll take that block first. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I just have a yes. question. Um, normally, do we get um, resumes for these people when they apply? 
or when they they apply to be on these boards. It's an application so form. They fill out right. their interest. They right. often include a resume or a statement yeah. of interest. And that goes to the back 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 back. Back. So the first time, Andy, they will give a complete set of re resume uh -huh. applications. Second time, they generally just return a letter to the town clerk saying, I want to re-up, and that's usually sufficient. We don't always call the board number in for re-uppage. Uh -huh. At the discretion of the vast, we will call selected boards in, sometimes if there are questions we might have about it. So and, we gen and we generally interview new people oh, right so oh. none of these are these are not new people no no oh, okay so uh, they've been doing the job already uh so let's see except for jeff everson who's moving nope that's right he's re-upping yep. okay okay and barry's just left off the list for commissioner subsequent but he's our nominee I, the only reason i ask is because i don't want to vote on somebody who i don't know whether or sure. not they know how to do the job but if they've been doing the no, job then okay good thanks question. good question Thank so this is a recommendation from the basque who right. does, they tend to yeah. vet them, so. Yep. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. <coughs> you wanna block, who's gonna block? Yeah, okay. I'll do them four block. All right, okay. all those in favor of the aforementioned names? Five zero. If there's any questions, just please shout. All right, uh, move uh, to uh, to appoint Rebecca Longwood to the Conservation Commission, uh, Sally Hoyt as constable, uh, Karen Goncalves Dolan and David Tuttle to the Community Planning and Development Commission. John Parsons, George Wetmore, Sandra Schaffer, Schaefer, I guess it is, to the Council on Aging. And Jana Stafford to Associate Membership for the Council on Aging, term ending 63019. Those are all, I think, in comments. Yeah. Right. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second for the discussion. All those in favor? Five zero. Move to appoint Nancy Zimlack, Rosemary Lewis, and Donna Schenkel to the Cultural Council and a new candidate whom we interviewed, Megan Fiddler Carey, to associate membership on the Cultural Council for a term ending 6-30-18. Eileen Bornstein to the Historic District Commission. Ron Weston uh, and Samantha Couture to the Historical Commission. Samantha was an associate and is moving up from associate to full, so she's been interviewed in the past. Uh, Linda Snow Doxer and Jung Yu to the Human Relations Advisory Committee that Jung was inadvertently left out. And uh, Joshua Goldlust to HRAC as an associate member, term ending 63018. And Jamie Michaels to HRAC as an associate member, term ending 63019. Uh, let's do the PBC too. Uh, John Coote and Nancy Toomey to the Permanent Building Committee. Michael Bean uh, is a permit build, building committee associate member, term ending 63019. Uh, those are all incumbents. Okay. Very second. second. Very second. Did I, by the way, did I mention Stephen Sedgwick, MAPC? No. I think we left him out. Uh, we didn't vote on him, but I believe he's re upping. <coughs> we didn't get paperwork. Oh, we talked about that. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have put him back. So I didn't make the motion. I don't need to put him in. Okay. okay. We're good. Yep. Okay, I have a motion, I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Five zero. Okay, move to appoint Carl McFadden to the Reading Ice Arena Authority, uh, Adam Chase, Richard Hand to the Recreation Committee, Gil Congdon to the Rec Committee as an associate member for a term ending 63019, Neil Cohen uh, to the RMLD Citizen Advisory Board for a term ending 63020. I think we recently <coughs> appointed them, but only to fill out the term that just ended. So mm -hmm. that's a question on any, anyone's mind here. Uh, Farouk Najmi, Najmi to the Town Forest Committee and Nancy Doctor to the Town Forest Committee as an associate member on 63019. Uh, Will Finch to the Trails Committee for a term in a 63020. Okay, default. do I have a second? Second. Very second again. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Five zero. Uh, we will need to in the future make appointments uh, to the Board of Cemetery Trustees, Board of Health. Uh, I think that's RCTV. RCTV Board of Directors, yep. And the, I think there's a spot on the Reading Housing Authority that we appoint, but we need to have some discussion around that maybe right. as a board, uh, sure. and maybe we'll just do that up here at the board level. We have one more. Um, mm -hmm. Appointment to the RCTV. We have yes. two, and we have one. Our current, one of our current ones, um, has indicated 
an interest in stepping back. Is that, is that Steve? Yeah. yeah. So we should probably just put out also with the three, you know, with the three other th you know, the three um, um, regulatory ones that they're going to do over RCTV as well. Sure. It's a very critical time. Yeah, and for right. Right. Is there anything else going on? Do and has anyone stepped up for the cemetery or housing authority? We're not sure of their situation. We're absent paperwork, yeah. I think, from the cemetery. For, for the cemetery, we have, we have some, yeah. but not all of it. Yeah, okay. it's not ready. Um, we have a housing authority. We have paperwork for a lease permit. But okay. And how about the Board of Health? Do we, have we have some issues to resolve there. Let's leave it at that. Okay. Let's see. Let's just thank all those people who yes. raised yes. their hands and yep. actually you know. and thank any who have retired from service too. Yeah, actually, yeah. actually, we should spend a few minutes there. Reading is really blessed to have this many volunteers that are willing to invest their time and energy and their, and their um, creative talents yes. uh, to work in these various areas. Uh, not every town has this luxury. Not every town has uh, this number of folks that are willing to volunteer and spend their good time and energy. So we're really blessed. I also want to thank you guys on the VASC. I know it's uh, time intensive to go through this. Um, it's nice when you have folks that you know and they're going to track this. Um, but I do appreciate you guys putting the time in for, um, to help us pre-screen. And, 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 and one thing I'll say is that, you know, some of the people that we talk to are new to town. And they're here a year, two years, three years. Um, don't really know a whole lot of people, but really like the town and want to get back and mm -hmm. um, it's it's great I mean you know, a lot of times we see the same people all the time not a knock on the same people all the time because you know, we need them but it's really great when you see new people and um, that's just a testament to people really want to getting involved and, and it's uh, it's fun to it's fun to do so Trying to figure out what we can do next. How about the debt sale? We need I'm Sharon. Sure we need Sharon. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, we want to go get her. I'm sure I she'll call her down. She'll, I'm sure she'll appreciate yeah. doing she's it earlier. She yeah. Well, are we ready for the DPW policy? Yeah, why don't we do that? DPW policies are we're way out of order. Actually, right. is Jeff we here? Right do we have the right people here? Yeah, well, um, Jane Kinsella is here, and Ryan um, is here as a town engineer. Um, Jeff Zager could not make it tonight. Okay. But he, he, they can discuss the policies. For us. Sorry to do this out of order, guys. We're way ahead of schedule, and uh, seats is rare for us. We all yeah. want to get home early. Because Bob's not here, I bet. It must be him that makes us. <laughs> <laughs> he never says anything. No. <laughs> like Matt, I'm pitch ending tonight, so uh, mm -hmm. um, just well, briefly, I believe you've received the memo for mm -hmm. the, the policies. I mean, from the flyers yep. in my packet. You know what page it is in our Thursday package? So I, can I think it's buried in the packet. I was trying to look for I can just give you a brief uh, background of, of how we got to this point. Um, I'd say back in mid 2016, um, DPW staff have gotten together also with the collector, and DPW director, assistant director, and myself to discuss some fees that we had some issues with. Uh, also some small um, abatement policies that we had issues with. And when we got together in a group and we started talking about these issues that we we had, it became a sounding board to more problems and issues and policies and procedures that we haven't addressed in decades because um, we just hadn't. Uh, that being said. Reoccurring theme. We've had several I'm meetings with you. and um, turned into looking at fees to looking at more of a broader um, asking questions of what the philosophy of the town and the department is in regards to where we want to go with these fees and the, these procedures. And there's a few questions in particular that the department needs to ask to move forward before we even get into that point where we start soliciting um, other communities, uh, peer communities, not only in the MWRA because it affects our water and sewer rates, but also in communities that are adjacent to us to see what they do, how they go about um, certain operations, what they do for fees, what they charge for fees. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but the town generally does not charge too many fees to residents as far as um, water and sewer. Um, 
what we're looking at is maybe mo going more towards um, going after developer fees, which we lack in. Um, so that's one aspect of what we're looking at. Another aspect is um, policies from the Board of Public Works that were intended to be adopted, may have been adopted, but they're not currently adopted. So <coughs> one case in point is the um, driveway rules and regulations, which we historically practice, have always practiced, but I don't know if it has been formally adopted when they adopted the Board of Public Works, when the Board of Selectmen absorbed the duties of the Board of Public so Works. So it's a practice, it's operational, but it's not a policy. Correct, and we're finding that there's a lot of those. Um, and it, it may have been absorbed, and this may be a, a question for council, that it, when, when the board absorbed the Board of Public Works, they may have just absorbed those, and I don't know if we have to absorb every single, or adopt every single policy separately. So let me go back on the fees question, Ryan. So sure. um, other than the developer fees, are there other obvious cases that you'd come to mind in terms of DPW fees? I could think of one, like a second meter. We talked about that. That's still a that's discussion. that's something that's come up on the table. Also, right. it's come up on the table with the with the selectmen. And I think it's still in process. It's due to come back up. Correct. That that that's one thing um, that's come up in our discussion. Right. Um, hasn't been a length lengthy discussion about that because I, you haven't finished your discussion about that. Um, what are some others though besides that? Um, just off the top of my head, some of the, the developer fees. We we have no fees for fire flow testing annual testing, backflow testing, um, hydrant flow testing. These are things that are charged in other towns that we we don't generally charge. Those are charged to, to development projects or not to Those, those would homeowner. generally be charged to commercial and development projects, correct. So it's essentially compliance or capacity testing before uh, you, you permit a... Uh, correct, or annual testing that's required for backflows or fire. And is the proposal from DPW to come back with a proposal on this point? Abs absolutely, absolutely. We, we've we gone through several meetings where it seems as you get involved in these discussions, you ask one more question and it, and it just becomes an on, you know, ongoing question. Absolutely. Um, so we, we've listed sort of a methodology of how we want to proceed and how we want to go about that. And you'll see in the memo that listed on there is actually fees is the last step. Mm -hmm. where we have to ask ourselves some certain questions that um, that's going to develop a, po a philosophy of, of where we want to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think to DPW's credit, we maintain our uh, water lines right up to the residents' home. In other words, the the service that's entry is maintained true. by DPW. That's true. Uh, are we contemplating charging fees for that? Or are we going to leave things the way they are? That's that's one of the areas that we're looking at. That's a, that's one of the major areas that we're looking okay. at, whether or not where ownership begins and where it ends. Um, and that's going to go hand in hand also with a few other questions that we do have. Um, we're also part of this is the, is the lead audit that we're, we're doing right now. Um, everyone's heard. Yep. Um, and we're, we're, ver we're very thorough in what we're doing for the lead audit. And we're about 50% done with that. And once that is completed, we'll know exactly what we have in our system for, for lead um, and for lead services. This is public buildings we're talking about now, not services. Not, not just public buildings, because we, we have completed that. We have done, Peter, how, how, how much have we done of those? Uh, the, lead sampling? Yes. For the schools, uh, we've, we've done um, three quarters of them. We've, we've done all the schools, but we've done. We've, we've done more than what is needed to be done, and we should be able to complete those Relative, the plan is to complete, complete that. Yeah, yeah. They, they. Uh, we're waiting for some um, samples to come back that we took uh, two weeks ago. And, and um, that's for the schools. The is there a widespread problem with lead in the distribution system from street to home in general, or is that pretty new pipe? Um, no, being that Reading is an old town and our water system, I think, was established somewhere around 1890. Mm -hmm. You're you're going to have older material all the way up to the new material of copper. We've done a very, very good job of removing a lot of it. Okay. Um, just through our Chapter 90 program, we, move, we remove anything that's not copper service. When we pave a road, we make it a copper service. How about up to the home? Because um, if you're going to start if charging fees uh, to do this, that, that's a significant expense people might correct. have. Correct, and that's comment. one of the reasons why we're, we're looking at that. Um, generally speaking, Chapter 90 is um, when we come across a, a fully lead service, we replace it with the bows. Okay. Um, chapter 90 is 
majority of our system is either galvanized or cement lined services. And those only have a very small, we call them a lead gooseneck, and, and it's maybe about a, a foot or two of lead from the main to the beginning of the service. That gets replaced when we do the Chapter 90 program. And we do about around 50 to 60 services a year. A year. Wow. That much is still in the system. Um, wow. We replaced cement line services, those small goose little goosenecks. Yeah. It, I just want to make everyone clear that we treat our water and MWA treats their water you know, the right way so we're not leaching out lead. Right. And we sample for lead and copper and we don't we do not have a problem in the in the system. So you mitigate it by treating the water to maintain pH. That's so correct. Got less chlorine, more ozone. That's correct. Barry. Ryan, do you have um, a sense of for the things that we don't charge for, mm -hmm. what the cost to the town is for providing the services? I, I can't I can't give you an answer for that, no. Um, I can tell you that it's prov we what's provided to the residents is made up for in the rates. Um, we provide a, a, a lot of service to the residents. Leak repair, uh, very low cost as far as replacement of services that are out of sequence from, from our replacement program. Um, Peter, is there any other ones that you can think of off, off the top of your head for residential? Uh, just to when they want to renew it um, for for their own reasons, whether it's, right, it's an that's iron that's pipe or they want to renew it, we do it at a very decent but, cost. but even some of the tests that you do for commercial and, mm -hmm. and, and development that we're not charging for, obviously there's a cost. There's a cost. There, there is a cost, that. and I, I can I can tell you right off. Just, we'll, we'll just pick something that's either like a, a hydrant flow test. Mm -hmm. Generally, those are done after hours or at night, so they don't disturb mm -hmm. the residents. Um, so we're dealing with two. Two DPW employees from the water division that are in, on overtime performing the test because we don't allow anyone to touch our system that's not water personnel. So they're there to witness, but not, on, not only witness, to operate the valves. So you know, you're looking at maybe an hour or two for testing uh, on a hydro flow test. And remember, this is on the enterprise side, not on the tax side. Yeah. Andrew, a question about the, the lead testing in the schools. Is, are you testing? Do you mean you're testing for lead surfaces, or uh, surface surfaces, lead on surfaces, or lead in the at the water fountain? Yeah, lead in, oh. in in the drinking water, it, or or kitchens, uh, bathroom, lab faucets, uh, every source of water in the schools. Okay, just water, not surface. Yeah, and all the information is on our the town's website with up to date mm -hmm. uh, results, right. and everything has been mitigated that we found so far. So we're on top of it. Thanks, Jim. Back to Barry's question, how hard would it be to say take 15 and 16 as examples and look at total um, service, just instances of these types of service A, service B, service C, service D, and just number of instances of each. And then we could typify what, for example, hydrant flushing, um, correct verification. It, that wouldn't be difficult at all for we us. We just need to get that tabulation. At, whenever it's convenient, sure. don't rush it. But that sure. might let us start to figure out what real benefit it's worth. It might, right. might be still really small. Absolutely. Dollars. And we pr when we provide the packet for uh, whatever recommendations or just looking at our fees in general versus the, the comparable communities, we'll have that all in that packet. Uh, so you'll, you'll have that information on our breakdown of what we feel <coughs> is costing the town but also what the, what the other surrounding towns and also communities in the MWA are also charging or not charging when and how expect, they calculate that. When do you expect to have a view of this? Realistically, I would say, um, I would think in, the, in a few months. Okay. Time. Um, this time of year is a very busy time of year, so it's really tough for us. To, you know, to we had it in the fall. I know we're going to have budget and all that other stuff. That might be an interesting topic to cover. I think, I think we'll shooting the for budget the discussion. I think shooting for the fall. I think that's. I think that's realistic. I think we can it's an important it. piece of information. That question that both of you have raised. Yeah. I think, particularly in light of all the other things that are, you know, going on in town around finance and budget. Mm -hmm. So, um, even just if we if we cover. I mean, I know it's on the enterprise side, so it's not it's not on the tax rate, but it's in the water bill. It's if it could save, you know, a couple of cents on the water bill, you know. They're user fees as opposed to a general be generalized benefit. These are um, incremental tasks where citizens are asking us to do. There's a fee attached to it. Right? Yeah, I mean, if that is, you're doing 50 of those, if that's a big number, if that turns into a big number, I mean, if that was a pass-through, yeah. 
and all of a sudden everybody. You're referring to the renewal of the services for the Chapter 90? I'm talking about, so for example, um, the work that you do on a homeowner's property mm -hmm. from the street to their home. Okay. Currently we're absorbing that. Correct. So, I mean, so you look at that, for example, and you say, okay, it's a big number, it's a small number. I, I, I don't have no idea what the number is, and I'm not asking you for the number. Um, but everybody's paying for that, right? If they're requesting the renewal, uh, the, the, the cost is on the homeowner from the street to the house if they request the renewal. If it's but if it's damage. If it's damage, if it's a leak beyond repair, whatever is determined by the water supervisor at the time it's replaced by the town by the town so you're correct in that instance right the only reason I bring it up is look people want to know how their money's being mm -hmm. spent and how they're spending their money and I think it's important for us to you know be as clear with them as we can I realize that because it's an enterprise side rather than a real estate tax side I mean you know that means it's in the water bill but that's everybody you know I mean, whether you're a homeowner or whether you're a renter, I mean, it, it's everybody. So <clears throat> when you start to, people have made us feel like we need to look under, you know, we, we need to lift up every rock and make sure that, you know, everything under there is being handled the correct way. And so I just, you know, this is occasion, to, you know, to maybe look at that because you know, I've been working with Bob on some of the other policies. I know just what you're up against. I mean, Matt and I and Bob and Gene sat down and, you know, we spent three hours just with the clear red flags that were f flapping in the breeze before you could even, and we didn't start asking questions. But once we did, I, you're, I get where you're coming from. I mean, it is a can of worms. Um, this, because this we inherited from an elected board's policy. So well, all of them really, but this one yeah. specifically is an elected board that was folded in. So, yeah. who, who knows what had happened through the years after it was absorbed by the selectmen and what had happened, or why? Or why? You know, um, it, it is hard to write good policy. I will say that, even elected or unelected. This is good work, Ryan. I'm looking forward to what you come back with. To John's point, we're looking at uh, fees for user services for fire and emergency transport. We're looking right. for fees for town forest. We're looking for fees for parking. This is another area that's an opportunity that's right. proportionalized to whoever's getting the benefit. So, and Just to be clear, we have started searching and, and seeing what other member communities. Right, you mentioned that. I'm curious to see what that is. So, I mean, we, we have gone down that road, and I think it's reasonable <coughs> to say that we'll have something available. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Great. No, I think this is really a great discussion. I mean, you've opened it up, you know, a good discussion here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Cell towers. I think we can move to the cell tower. Do we have a, this is not a public hearing. We don't have a notice. Uh, not technically, no. It's a public process, not a public hearing, yeah. right? Sure. I think I need to read that. I will if you'd like me to. Please. <coughs> Public notice. This notice is to inform you that the Board of Selectmen will be having a preliminary discussion regarding a proposed cell tower adjacent to the Auburn Street water tank. This item is scheduled to start at 8 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, June 27, 2017, at Town Hall in the Selectmen's Meeting Room. The town is proposing a cell tower to help address many issues, including, but not limited to, the placement of the water tank, overcrowding, and structural deficiencies to the tank due to the cellular cellular equipment, safety hazards, increased public safety coverage, and poor cell coverage. The intent of this meeting is to discuss the scope of the project, possible timeline, participants including public safety entities, and involvement of the public. The butters have been invited and are welcome to attend. It is important to note that this is one of many meetings open to the public and the selectmen will not be taking a vote on this item at this time. Um, before we open up to public comment, any of the comments by the board in terms of what was in the package? Uh, is, is there going to be a presentation of some kind? There is no formal presentation. Okay. This is just a round table. Okay. So, if 
But this is a follow-up to the presentation yeah. that right, if you remember, you gave us. That's true. We remember before. in the fall, yeah. right. I believe October or November. <laughs> so to refamiliarize myself, we have maintenance issues on the tower. Correct. On the, on the water tank. Correct. Um, just some brief background, and I'll just just so everyone can remember what uh, we're dealing with here. The the tank is. We're at the time where we have to repaint the tank. We're actually past that time. Something that should happen every 10 to 15 years, and we're way past due. That being said, in order for us to paint the tank, all the cell carriers have to come off the tank. Um, in the discussions that we had had prior, um, we also thought it would be a great time to look at a life, ci life cycle cost of painting versus a replacement of a tank. Mm -hmm. In short, we learned right around year 15, that's the break-even point of where we would have to paint again and the crossover of a new tank. So long story short, the, the we've decided to replace the tank. It, it just makes more sense at this time. Um, that being said, we still have the issue with the carriers on the tank. Um, we've discussed for numerous reasons why we would like to have the carriers off the tank. One, for maintenance in the future. That's the obvious one. Two, there's a lot of deep, uh, DEP regulations that require us to have personnel with the carriers when they want to go and, and work on it. We don't want to have that happen anymore. Because we have structural deficiencies on our tank due to the carriers overloading our tank and overcrowding. There's OSHA violations with overcrowding of the catwalk. Um, there's corrosion issues where we have dissimilar metals and stretching and, and bracketing. And there's a few other reasons Security, I would think. Security is one of the ones that I alluded to with the DEP regulations. And also, I mean, we have poor cell coverage in town. That's to be noted. I'm not a driving factor, but it is a factor. We also have the factor of increased public safety uh, radio, which we would, um, that would increase pub public safety. And the public safety antenna, if I understand it, is at the direct top of the tower, the hardest one to get to. That is correct. That is correct. And important to note that we do not have full mobility of our ladder, which goes around the tank, which we're supposed to. It, there's a ladder because that's of what's on, on there. Right. 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 Um, so there's a lot of issues, a lot of issues. So we have a tank project, and we have a cell tower project, if you look at them, but they're, they have to happen concurrently. I don't know if this affects the cell tower planning, but how would you replace the head provided by the tank while you're replacing the tank? Is, are you going to reinforce? And en enhance the tank in another area of town. So, and again, we haven't really gotten to the design. We, we've we've uh, we have a consultant with for the cell tower, Paul Bergman and Associates. Um, but we haven't gotten to the design and, and, and really gone down the hydraulic road yet. But we do have another tank in town, Bear Hill Tank. Right. It's slightly larger. Um, we feel as though that that should be able to handle our capacity needs the time being why we take that tank out of service. Again, that's all going to be flushed out when we do the hydraulic model. So and nothing on site is, is a replacement structure for temporary? No. Yep. Ideally, in a perfect world, what would happen is cell tower would go up, mm -hmm. carriers would go on, come right. off the tank, we demo the water tank, water tank goes up. Um, so the condition of how high the, the cell tower is is going to be determined on how high the water tank is because it has to be Very above there. Right. And also where the location of each is dependent on where the location So from a redundancy standpoint, um, where are we on the MWRA redundancy? I mean, are we there where they've got that opportunity? We're close. We're close. We're on the final leg. Um, so it almost way. makes you wonder, I mean, once we have that in place, we don't have to worry quite so much about the downtime of that reserve. Um, I would er always err on the side of caution when it comes to our water storage and supply, as we know we had the we had the yeah, fire. We were able to manage that with the help of the, the water division and MWA, and um, you know, talking to some neighboring communities that also pull off of the MWA. They didn't take as much that day, um, so storage is very important, and that means. Yeah. So we always want to have a redundant storage. Yeah. So it's good that we have two. Um, there is discussion of getting rid of Bear Hill at some point. So this is ideal that this gets replaced now before that happens. Will the size of the tank be bigger? 
that you replace with? I, I believe hydraulically, <coughs> we're, we're going to look at that, but I, I believe hydraulically, no, it, it might not have to be bigger, but we might look at elevation. We might try to increase it a little bit to gain a little bit more pressure in the system. But again, we have we have the, the fact that we're having a redundant supply from the MWA. That, that's going to be crucial. Um, it's a 36-inch water line that goes through the town. There's some storage just in that pipe alone, yeah. a few million gallons. So. <laughs> Talk about redundancy. You're talking about the link through Woburn and Stoneham. Yeah. Yeah. So the portion that we're on, there was, let's say, three phases to that. One was the first phase up through Woburn. Then there was the phase down Oak Street and Summer Avenue and Hoffman Street, right. Main Street. And now they're on the phase in Stoneham. Right. Um, that's the key phase. Once that's done, the redundant loop will be done. So the system's not pressurized that way. You, didn't it used to be a gravity pressurization when we had the well fields from the towers? Everything is being fed the, via gravity or pump from the MWA Quabbin Reservoir. Okay. So um, those are just storage vehicles. That, that amount of piping, though, probably is as much water sitting in those redundant pipes yep. as you're going to have in that tank. Right. Probably. Um, that also helps maintain our pr hydraulic grade line as well yep. pressure in the system what do you think the total cycle time to deconstruct reconstruct what, from an expectation setting point of view i believe from our last meeting we had with the carriers which bob was in attendance to um, we were hoping to have at least a cell tower constructed sometime um, i think summer of august or september of next year 18. Yeah. Um, that has to happen before the tank if we're if we're looking at two it's to happen together that has to happen before the tank and the tank will be I would say realistically a year after that it's just so where are we on our leases with them we have one <coughs> is it T-Mobile yeah T-Mobile um, if they expire actually in November they're looking for a two-year extension on their lease everybody else when they move over they're all under lease right now when they move over to the new cell tower they'll get new leases so the only one I'm dealing with right now is T-Mobile. So when line. we take them down, the lease is stopping. Is that what it is? Right, that right. so we don't have an obligation <coughs> if the tower is down or if the tank is down. An obligation. To so I guess what I'm trying to find out is yep. we have tenants. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. to simplify this for me, I mean you know, essentially we've got tenants. Do they have a lease? Yes or no? Are they month to month? What is the situation as far as? are being able to displace those tenants um, either into something else that we construct that it, it's mutually agreeable? <coughs> is that where we start tearing up their leases and starting over again? If there's a disruption yeah. such yeah. that they're yeah. on the tower on day one but can't go on at the tank on day one but can't go on the tower on day two, what's the obligation or liability? Do we have a service le level agreement with them? Well, we, we've all, we, <coughs> we've been at all the meet all the carriers are there at the meetings that we're having, so we're, we're still in the preliminary stages of it. But I'd imagine that you know once we get everything all ready, um, we would actually put out an RFP and they would move over and, and they could bid on what, what, what part of the cell tower they want to be on. But until then, they have long-term leases. Yeah, so they we're obligated to them. Yeah. So what happens if that's interrupted? What's our liability if that's interrupted? Financial liability. I can I could check that out with, with the town council. I mean I don't I think we're looking at really no interruption. I mean if we build the, the tower we and then we wouldn't be moving them off of that until we had something to put exactly. on. Exactly. Right. But if so something unforeseen, yeah, the happened. tank sits there with the top and yeah. unless you yeah. then you have a replacement tower if that's right. the course we take. That's all new equipment. Temporary we're not moving scaffolding. The equipment. Right, they're, they're going to put yeah. new stuff there, but we say move just to, you know. Well, we'll have new leases, too. Right. In right. other words, we have the same tenants. We're just moving them to nicer apartments. I guess what I'm trying to yes, I'm trying to understand what our ability to break the lease is, because that's essentially what we're doing. Well, yeah, we'll be and sort of renegotiating, but they're, they want this, too. You know, they, they Well, they want better service. Right, and so we're all on the same page here. So, I mean, anything could happen, but we're not foreseeing that happening. You know, they're all on board. We have meetings with them. Like I said, T-Mobile is the only one that expires early, and we'll deal with them directly. Any other questions, Dan? Yep. How have the meetings with the neighbors gone regarding you know aesthetics of the design of the tower? That's one of the reasons why we're here tonight to discuss how we want to proceed uh, with moving forward to the public. Again, I have uh, Paul Bergman, um, who's a consultant for the town, um, to help us in that process as far as whether we do renderings or what, what we do open up that uh, to the public um, 
we haven't had any meetings regarding the public yet. We, we, we invited the abutters tonight. Yes. I believe they were noticed. Are there folks here? We have oh, abutters. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Why don't we, um, if there are no other questions, why don't we open up for public yeah. comment? I think that's so if you want idea. to say something, please stand, state your name, your address. Mm -hmm. and okay, I'd love to talk on this. <laughs> please. Mark Delaney, 26 Beacon Street. My boxer used to, what, you have the little dog? Uh, yeah, Ming. Oh, yeah, I see yeah. you on the road, right, yeah. Uh, I gotta say I'm really disappointed. This is the first notice I've received of this. They've already got this thing built. They haven't even talked to the, the people directly affected by this, the neighborhood. Not, not one person on this board talked about the neighborhood and how it affects the neighborhood. They're talking about a 160 foot tower next to a 110 foot tower. I, I mean, I'm, I'm dumbfounded that the decision's already been made and they haven't even talked to the neighborhood. Now I appreciate that the board has to balance the interest of the town the interests of neighborhoods. You live somewhat nearby. I don't think any of you live up by the water tower. So you can't really appreciate what it is we're talking about. We're not talking about a big piece of land here. Uh, I've seen a rendition uh, just by accident, by Googling it. It's like the Eiffel Tower beside the water tank. There's trees that surround that water tank. And at least during the summer, it blocks the view. Now we're gonna have this. This is, uh, this is not a fair process to this point. I mean, we talked about this is the first notice. There's gonna be a number of hearings. The decision's already been made that we need to do this. What I don't understand is we have a water tank. We have cell carriers. When we put a water tank there, the town has an obligation for the benefit of the town to maintain it. Before cell soap service was invented, those carriers weren't paying rent. So there was additional money to make the improvements, maintain the, the tank, and that hasn't been done. So now what we're offering is we're gonna have another tower that you're gonna be responsible for maintaining, improving. You know, I don't have haven't seen any analysis to justify what you said you've already decided you're gonna do. None of us have. I would also point out, because I'm a little familiar with this, I mean, the, the carriers, they don't own these towers, they rent. So that means we own it. But today, they're not building these towers anymore. They're doing small cell sites where they're putting them on poles. They're putting them on telephone poles, lighting poles. All the carriers are moving in this direction. And then what happens when ultimately it's all coming from, you know, they got satellites beaming this stuff down and we got these two monstrosities in our neighborhood. So, just based on what I heard, I, I can say this, I'm very disappointed, because you guys, the, the horse has left the gate, it's going down the back stretch, and no one's even talked to us yet. We got this simple notice there's gonna be more hearings, but the decision's been made. So that's what I'd like to offer. I'd like you to consider traveling up there, look at this 160 foot tower they're gonna to put beside this 110 foot water tower that we live with, that we're fine with. And if you live in that neighborhood, tell me what you think. Mark, at one point there were two water towers on that site, right. the, the Rocket and the Big Mac. Do you remember when the Rocket came down? That's before my time. Anybody know how tall the rocket was? Because that was significantly higher than the uh, current tank. I remember. I mean, I was here at the time. I can see. Yeah. I, I bet it's it close to 160. Wasn't that much taller? It wasn't that much taller. Was it? Okay. In terms of your comments about notice, this is probably the second time it's come before this board, and it came up at town meeting as well when we talked about um, the design study. Oh, no. yeah. um, this may. I'm not sure if the the abutters have been noticed. But this is still an open discussion. There's no concept of design that we've done. Well, it just it just sounds like it's it's much farther down the track. It's the decision's been made. It's just a question of how. It's what it sounds like to me. It, he referenced they've had numerous meetings about this. I, think that's because I know there's only one before this board that at least I'm aware of that, that I found on online. So I mean, I'm not I'm not mad at you you guys, but I'm just saying, you know, in light of what I'm hearing here, this being the first notice that we've received. 
you know, it's kind of stunning. I mean, he's talking about having this tower built by next August. That's less than a year away here almost. Yeah, well, uh, a little bit more than a year away. Yeah. Maybe we can I mean, talk about the time timetable for involvement here. But it's still a proposal. No decision's been made at this point. When would we expect? Yeah, well, yeah. When would we expect to have concept of appearance or concept of uh, design documents? I mean, there's probably three or four ways to construct such a thing, proposal, yeah. proposals to construct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead. My name is Paul Bergman. My company, Bergman and Associates, uh, we're engineers. Um, in the last few years, we've done similar projects for the town of Framingham and another one for the town of Bedford, which is actually uh, the towers going up as this meeting is taking place. Um, the, the whole concept of, of what the tower is going to look like how high it's going to be, uh, from which vantage points, uh, which streets, and, and whatever it can be seen within the community. Um, those questions can be answered in part by, by photo renderings, where they fly a weather balloon at the, at the altitude of the tower. And then uh, a driver in a vehicle with high order GPS and, and camera drives all around the community and maybe even outside the community. And, and then from that work, we put together renderings and maps uh, as to uh, depicting where the tower can be seen and to what extent. Um, and, and the height of the tower, if I may, that's a, that's a really important um, number that can, you can only arrive at that after a fair amount of homework. Um, you don't want a tower that's too short because as, as was mentioned earlier, uh, it might be able to clear the, the new water tank. By the same token, um, there's good reason not to have a tower that's too high either. Um, the carriers, contrary to what might be common belief, don't want to have antennas that are too high because then it overshoots um, users uh, within the general vicinity of the tower itself. So there's like a certain area that they want to be within. Um, Bedford was actually limited because the town of Bedford was limited at their water tank site because the tower is in the glide slope of a Hanscom Air Base. It's not near a glide slope, it's right in a glide slope. So the FAA actually dictated the height of that tower. That was kind of an unusual situation. I've talked to Ryan and, and Jeff and um, there's no airports really in proximity so the FAA their decision might not be as important as it was for the Bedford project. But in terms of aesthetics, not just raw height, but in terms of aesthetics, appearance, construction methods, yeah. how, could, how, could, how could we be in a position to show alternative concepts for abutters to look at what alternatives might exist? Those of us driving down the Mass Pike occasionally see that. That isn't really a pine tree over there, but it take, you have to know where to look sometimes, Th those sorts of things. I imagine there's other creative options that the industry's come up with. There's actually uh, um, fake water tanks. Um, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, there's been water tank towers that are constructed out of fiberglass with antennas inside the tank, if you will. That's somewhat unusual. Uh, there's the tree towers. Um, if anybody's on, been on Route 2 East, you're around the Harvard, Massachusetts neighborhood. And there's a, there's a tree tower that that particular planning board demanded of the carriers, and it's, it, it looks like a huge shrub. I, I mean, it doesn't really <laughs> look like a tree. Um, and, and, and a galvanized tower, um, when you first galvanize steel, it, it has a shiny, it, it, it has a shine to it. But in a very short amount of time, the finish dulls, just like guardrail on the side of the highways. It dulls just because of oxidation with the atmosphere. So it turns more of a gray color. But um, to try to get back to your question about <coughs> options, you, you have the tree towers, the whole fake water tank. I'm not sure that would be appropriate. Um, they have what, what are called monopoles. It's like a tapered steel pole. Um, that's one option. Then they have another lattice type tower, um, which on a dollar for dollar basis is the most efficient tower that you can buy. And that's the, that's the towers that Framingham and Bedford actually went with. Um, 
that's a, is in a is in a similar but different situation from Reading. Uh, they have a standpipe uh, in their community within stone's throw of um, Route 3, north and south. And the DE, that, that standpipe still has from some useful life left in it, but the DEP was all over the town to do something with that particular structure because there were so many antennas and cables welded, bolted onto that tank that they couldn't even paint it anymore. So the DEP really started to come down in that community. That pushed them into doing similar to what you folks are considering. And their new tower actually just got installed the last couple of days. So they're, they're well on their way towards moving all the antennas and equipment from the standpipe over onto the tower. Then they can paint their standpipe. I mean, Reading, uh, you know, you're replacing your structure. But the similarities between the two projects. So, um, I mean, it's clear why we have to move uh, the antennas. We have to repair or, or replace the water tower. But is that the only location that a cell tower could go on? I mean, it's there because it was an existing water tower and it was a high point. But have other locations been scouted out that might be less intrusive? Um, that if we have to move it and build it, it not necessarily have to be built over there unless that's the only location. And I don't, have you looked at other? other locations potentially that might be topography comes into play yeah. topography comes into play mm -hmm. when, when you're talking about propagation of uh, uh, cell coverage um, to answer your question we can look at other locations um, yeah. um, any locations don't come pop into my head of that are at a higher elevation was well, that not only higher but almost the perfect geographic center of the town is that really Close what's driving it is there a physical plant that you've got a provision to get up there as well? Or is it just power is really all you need? Um, well, pow there's power there already. Um, again, there's a lot of, there's a... Um, is there vendor wiring that, that's got to be provisioned up there as well? Or is it... Um, no, that would all be, that would all be supplied by the, the carriers when they move. To, to, they're going to update all their wiring when they do that, um, if they were to. Um, there's already power on site and I believe fiber on site at that location. So the infrastructure uh, is in place at that site. At that yeah. site. Yeah. Andy, do you have a question? Yeah, I just I wanted to ask the the. I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Mark. Yeah, Mark. Um, <coughs> to to reiter, reiterate what the chair said, um, I think in, to sort of paraphrase what you said or. I think the horse hasn't really left the uh, the gate yet. The jockey is just sort of telling us the racetrack that the horse may be going down. So, so, so we're going to be having more public hearings about um, what the racetrack will look like, so to speak. I, I, I would like to ask you to repeat what you said about you think that the cell uh, cell service is moving towards multiple point. Uh, source signals rather than the single tower concept? It absolutely is. Absolutely is. I know this firsthand. Small cells. As a matter of fact, it would be very lucrative for this town. Uh, uh, I think the municipal life plan owns most of the poles in this town. Yeah, about half of them. Yeah. But I can tell you that the carriers are all focused on small cell sites now to increase capacity and fill gaps. So. It's one thing and I haven't heard discussed that absolutely should be looked into. Mm -hmm. You may not need a, a cell tower in this town. But, you know, just on that point, has anyone considered incorporating uh, new cell tower technology? If you're replacing the water tank, why don't you, as part of the new design, incorporate the cell service and the antennas into that design? I mean, if you're replacing it, you've got the structure there, it's going to be that high. And you can have it built properly so you can maintain it easily and you can charge the carriers because the carriers are just going to pass the cost on to their customers at the end of the day. So I just throw it on the table as something thought. to consider. Yeah. Yeah. There is a smarter design that tried to combine a, a new water tower with a, uh, an appropriately designed tower infrastructure. Is that, a, is that even a possibility? 
In other words, what you've got today is an old-fashioned water tower where somebody bolted on mm -hmm. you know, five different carriers worth of equipment with no attention to galvanic corrosion, maintenance, hazard protection, fall protection. The water tower wasn't designed Correct. to hold so. Yeah, but so. if you started with a clean sheet of paper and said, okay, here's the tower, here's the infrastructure to allow the electronic component on top of it, still allowing the painting and maintenance, is that even possible or must, is the only? I'm sure anything's possible to answer your question. I asked question. the question in the wrong way. Is yeah, it practical? That's the question. Staging I would say from, from a, a standpoint of a water tower, a water tank versus a cell service site, the answer is no. I mean, we, we've come to the conclusion where we would love to have no cell carriers on our tank. The, the, the water tower is just simply that, a water tower. It made sense back in the day when towns may have been looking for some sort of revenue and, sell, and these water tanks were there as part of a, an easy solution to put carriers on them, you know, and, and the towns were looking for revenue, so of course it made sense. Now Bedford, Framingham, Town of Reading, I'm sure other communities are going to start having this problem with maintaining and painting their tanks <coughs> and having these carriers on there. We could certainly we ask try. the question and look and see if... Let me try one more time. The tank at Bear Hill is flat on top, right? It's a big cylinder. Is that true? Uh, it has a roof level. I think it's yeah. yeah I think point, it has a pointed roof, I believe, just on a, it. Just a okay. yeah. conical roof. It is a conical roof. I guess. Yeah. Um, I could imagine that you'd have some sort on the conical roof a superstructure that would be the electrical component. You'd still have maintenance ability to paint everything, but you'd have a superstructure. You take advantage of the base height that the tank allows you, and you'd still have the ability to kind of put this as a cherry on top. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's practical. But it strikes me as a clever thing. To I'm consider. sure it could be. I'm sure we can ask the question and look at as it. Opposed to today, where we have the Big Mac, you know, this thing, space, this, this flying saucer in space with these antennas mm -hmm. bolted to the side. This is part of the creative. Yeah. To, to answer your question, I, I don't know. I don't know the, the answer. The Delaney's I'm comments sure. have actually <laughs> are pretty clever. I think you know, there's maybe another way to solve this problem. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure we could look in look yeah. into that and see if it is practical. Um, okay. Other questions from the public. Just stand up, say your name, your address, and let us know what's on your mind. Mike Lacey, 9 Beacon Street, uh, obviously running. Uh, I looked into this myself, and both my wife and I all inclusively. I don't want my picture taken. Thank you. Okay. We looked into this, and I pose this all inclusively. Not only is it an eyesore, but what's the added health risks associated with us? Looked into that. I have. I have. Have you guys done any research? Can Why? I ask a question there. Aren't they actually moving the broadcasters further away from the people? That's the proposal. There, there's uh, currently uh, already carriers on the, yeah, on the that's tank. That's cool. there, there's currently already carriers on, on the tank. Okay. Um, there are five carriers on the tank today. This is not new carriers. Not new. This is taking the five that are on there today and moving five to a different location. Higher up. Higher up. Hi higher up. So, so you're going to remove a water tower, right? And put a cell tower. No, no, we're going to remove a water tower and put up a water tower in its place. The water tower needs to go back in the same location. In addition, the cell service that's on that tower needs to go somewhere. We have contracts. We're dis discussing the vehicle to, to replace those five carriers worth of equipment in some fashion. A second tower, an idea to put it on top of a new tower, but there's no new risk here. The carriers are on the tower now and have been for, for years, decades. And what's that going to do to property value? They're on the tower now. Okay, so when you when you construct a, a cell tower, mm -hmm. what's going to happen to the property value? It's going to be an eyesore. Well, that's why we're talking about alternatives. We've heard about a p potential for a tower that's another tank. There were two tanks on that site 20 years ago. We took one down due to its dilapidated state. Um, the, the facility is built to have industrial and uh, municipal equipment on it. I understand your point about putting the tower there, but in terms of the equipment, it's already there. The equipment we're talking about, the facility, the cabling, it's already on the grounds now, operating right now. Your Verizon phone is talking to the tower and you make a call. So I, in terms of the equipment, that's the discussion we're having right now is what, should, what form and substance should that tower or the replacement for the electronics take? And I was in agreement with, with Mr. Delaney yeah. that this is already in, bullets already in the chamber, so to speak. No, no it's not. 
Yeah, this is so just this not is even a 25 percent design. Not even the 25 percent. We haven't not even started design. It's funded. Right. We're just talking about it. Well, the design's funded. The, the, the concept of the design is funded, but there's, there's no execution to go off and get it done. Now, in what other towns would there be have this type of cell service or capacity in one location in a residential neighborhood? I can't answer. Because every every when you mentioned Framingham. And this gentleman over here mentioned Bedford. You were talking about the Mass Pike and those trees. We all know those. You know, they're, that's an industrial neighborhood. And the Mass Pike. You're talking about Route 3. You're talking about Beacon Street and Auburn Street yeah, in, a res in a residential neighborhood which where there's a lot of young kids. I'm not here. I'm 35. That's fine. You know, call it midlife if you want. You know, it is what it is. But I'm, I'm here because I got two young kids. And I know that the, the research I've done is the negative effects on this radiation. Again, nobody can tell me, even the ones that are there. I don't even like the ones that are there. Nobody can say that they run horizontal. They don't. And to, to increase that capacity to whatever, you're not going to construct <laughs> anything new and not, not have it improve more efficiently. efficiently or hold, be able to hold more, more fiber optics of anything of that sort. It just doesn't happen. So it's going to be stronger. It's going to be po more powerful. It's going to be enhanced. It's going to be improved. It's going to create more radiation. It's going to create more energy coming off it. See what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. And to, and to have more, potentially one of those fake shrubs up there, right across from my house. I, if I, if that was the case, I would have moved somewhere else. Let me be clear and clarify what I said. I was only asking what other alternatives existed, and I used that as a convenient example that we all know. I wasn't suggesting. It doesn't that. even parallel. I just wanted the to Mass Pike in Auburn. In you're, Auburn absolutely, Beacon you're absolutely right. I did it only to trigger the conversation. It's a, an example we all so know. So let's let's use analogies that make sense. That 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 are wrong. What would you use? That's why I asked what other neighborhoods or what other communities in surrounding communities, Melrose, Wakefield, Stoneham, North Reading, mm -hmm. have a cell tower in a closely knit residential community. That's what I asked. I'm not talking about Mass Pike, I'm not talking about Route 3. I that's, can't answer that. Do you that's know that? an FCC regulated area, correct? <clears throat> about the siting of towers? Uh, there's a permit associated with the Why aren't cell towers near constructed right next to schools? It's another one of my questions. I think they can go on private parcels that are not industrial. Why aren't they, why, why, why uh, are cell towers not constructed right near schools? Because of the health, additional negative health risks that are associated with it. Well, the other possibility is you need a flat area for schools because you have kids and you need a high area for antennas for signal. Why? Universally, take a look at the surrounding communities. Just do some research. You'd be surprised. I did. And trust me, guys. I appreciate your time. I do. I got better things to do than come down here and, and, and fight this. Like I said, it's quarter of nine at night. But obviously, this, the cons outweigh the pros. That's why I'm here. Thank you very much for your yeah, time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, and the question of uh, the public safety question is going to be one that folks are going to ask. Mm -hmm. um, the response that it's there today is an accurate one, but it's not necessarily a responsive one. People are going to want to know, do we have a vehicle or is, does there exist an industry vehicle to kind of convey that, the, the signal radiation or FCC? Yep. FCC. And, and how much comes out of the air is cell phone, too, to bear to that. Right, but if we wanted to present that to lay people so that they could ex understand it in, in their terms and present it in folks that are non-engineering terms, is there right. a, a vehicle to do that? That would be helpful, I think. The, 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 the town could hire a, a consultant to generate a report to that end. Well, there's, there's nothing well, there, off the shelf. There, there is exist, there has to be there's existing research. research. There, 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 there are studies, there are studies about radiation from cell towers, from, from electrical transmission towers. But what I was trying to say is that the town could solicit the services of a, of a special consultant for, for this particular site if you were interested. Okay. I think that's a topic that's going to come up and right. I'm thinking less about a report and more about a, a human being that comes and speaks on a subject matter 
in a non-engineering, non, non uh, impenetrable language kind of explains it in, in terms that the average citizen can make sense out of. That's probably an important thing that we need to cover. Because even though there's five there now, there'll be five when they're, you know, if the project goes forward and there'll be three times the distance than it is at the moment, which is a huge difference electrically. Um, folks are still going to have questions, so I think that's an important area. And then the topic of alternative constructions, whether it's a lattice, whether it's a water tower-ish, the parallel that's already up there, there'll, there'll have to be some concept designs that go up and get reaction from folks. Or locations. Or other locations. Other comments? Sir, just stand, give your name. I'm sorry, I just pointed this gentleman here, sorry. Just stand, give your name, and tell us where you live. Uh, Bob Connor, 7 Beacon Street. Uh, is it safe, I have a couple questions, is it safer to have a higher tower, and this would be higher than the other towers, is there a cell phone expert here? Phone, phone an expert here? No? Okay. Uh, and uh, I was under the impression there were only four carriers, so uh, is there a limit to how many carriers that would be on the new tower? Is it five now? I thought the limit was four. I don't know if town meeting did that, but you said <coughs> five. Uh, I think it may be four. There was a fifth that was vying to get on, wasn't there? Yeah, I'm I'm the zero it's three with a possibility. There's three with the possibility of a fourth. Okay. So we stand corrected. There are three today with a fourth vying to get on today. No, this plus, plus police and fire and public service and oh, all that. I guess we're not fighting police and fire. That's probably given, but... Well, this person was in town meeting, and I, I got the impression that the town meeting had settled on four. I don't know if that's a magic number, so maybe you, you people know. Uh, and uh, I guess I guess the big thing is safety. Uh, I have, my kids are all grown, but uh, my Mike neighbor, and uh, uh, that would be my primary concern. The second is the uh, property values. When they're on the water tower, you don't really notice them. Having a cell tower that's a that's 16 story building, 160 feet. Is that right? Uh, height hasn't been settled on yet. Um, Somebody said 160 feet. That's just just for picture's sake. It's it hasn't been. Okay. We haven't determined what height it's going to be yet. How high is the current water tower? Yeah, right. Around 110 feet. 110. So it, theoretically, it could be five stories higher than the water tower. It could be 160. Theoretic. Yeah. Theoretically. If if it was safer having a, a higher tower that offsets the uh, negative of looking at it, so it's kind of a, like a, a trade off, obviously. But anyway, those those are my. Concerns. I appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you. Steve. Stephen Crook, one thirty seven Pleasant Street. So not in the neighborhood. It seems to me the difficulty you have is you have two problems. You have one, you're dealing with the water tower, which you have jurisdiction over. But the cell tower jurisdiction is the United States FCC. So you, your hands are really kind of tied, are they not, with respect to the cell company's desires to site towers and locate towers and, reg and the regulations? I, I'm not a, I don't know, but I would imagine if it were immediately adjacent to the current site, that's contemporaneous, and that's just an extension of what's there. If it were to be resited, those other questions probably come to play. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of what you might want to limit with cell towers. You can't because of U.S. FCC regulations, which makes it hard for you. But it's hard, right? It's, <coughs> it's certainly outside of the scope for tonight's discussion. I agree. But meanwhile, yeah, there's legitimate discussion. It makes more sense to build a tower for cellular and a tower for water, because uh, it was indicating I guess the DEP has some issues with the maintaining. Or does it make sense to integrate them? That that certainly is in in scope. Just a thought. Thank you, Steve. Dan. Yeah, I was just looking on the American Cancer Society uh, website, and they do comment on energy levels around typical cellular base stations. And they are very specific in saying at ground level near typical cell cellular base stations, meaning towers, the amount of RF radio frequency energy is thousands of times less than the limits for safe exposure set by the U.S. Federal Communication Commission and other regulatory authorities. It is very unlikely that a person could be exposed to RF levels in excess of these limits by just being near a cell phone tower. That's from the American Cancer Society. Yes, sir. Uh, did they set the asbestos limits years ago, Dan? <coughs> you have to ask them. No, I, I think the point is we need to, there's plenty of stuff on the web. You need to give folks a sense of comfort. Yeah. 
you'll need subject matter experts to speak in layman's terms. I can completely appreciate that. I would just say, if you own a cell phone, better throw it away if you're worried about the RF energy. Yeah. Any other comments? Or coming out of your phone. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, Elizabeth Witham, uh, 28 Auburn Street. Um, I am concerned about what the property, what, what this will do to property values. I am concerned about um, the look and feel of our neighborhood if having a very, very large structure like that in a very, very small neighborhood if we do not have a lot of space between houses, there isn't a lot of green space and, and everything. It really will have a, a major effect. I really would love to know that there's a guarantee that it will improve cell coverage in the schools area because coverage is hideous at the high school, at Coolidge, at the Y, at Birch Meadow. I mean, it, it, it and I really question about whether or not it, they really will, if, if it will really improve it, because if they're going to be replacing with what they have, it's not good, it, all it's gonna do is raise it up a little bit, but it's not gonna increase the strength. So they're probably gonna wanna put stronger, you know, cell towers on those, you know, whatever the devices are, up there, which will have an effect on, you know, the, the, could have an effect on the health of the community. So those are things that really need to be seriously considered before this is done. Also really curious if this is tied to any of the work that's being mapped out on our street now um, already, because there's lots of spray paints all over Auburn Street, no. and we don't know if when this is supposed to start and when I know you said that I'm going to toss, toss that question. Less. Ryan, you want to speak to that? Uh, hang on. No, just, this has nothing to do with any okay, of that. So it's not starting yet. No, there's some utility infrastructure work that's going to be happening on, on the water mains, um, but that but that's it. Okay. And the, and the gas main, is, they're doing work out there as well. Okay. When would this start? I mean, I know that we're not, you know, we don't have the final idea, the final concept, but when is the projected start date of this happening for the water tower and the cell tower and when it's a projected end date of the set of whatever is second. <laughs> I've heard we, one we of don't have a projected date now. We don't know how long the, the public process will go. Um, I could imagine that the public process could take several meetings alone by themselves and then there's a design phase and a, a public reaction to that. And um, some of these other more clever ideas may take some additional work to, for economic sake. The, we've already talked about explaining the, uh, in simple layman's terms, what we're doing so folks get comfort level. Your point is a good one. Um, I'm not certain whether the companies are putting more powerful stuff up there or they simply have a better shot of being able to direct what the signals they have over the trees and therefore the same as what they have is just a better angle on their target, a better, I, I live, 200 yards from the water tower, I can't get Verizon in my house. I have to go out yeah. to the porch to make a phone call. Yep. I could hit it with a rock, but I can't get a signal in my kitchen. Um, so I know what you're talking about. But I think all of that's got to play out publicly, and I'm very sensitive to the whole property values discussion. My only comment is that that site has been used in the last two decades as for two separate water towers. And maybe there's a clever way to kind of play into that that theme going forward to, to make it look like a second water tower <coughs> it's a different functioning entity. I think it would be important to have um, a comparison of property values in other communities that have cell towers and or water towers or both right. in a very close residential space. Thank you for your comments. Any, any other public comment? One final. Yes, sir. Councilor Friedman seemed to be the only one interested in the small cell sites. I can tell you the carriers have gotten legislation passed in 10 states so far just this past year to bring efficiency to the permitting of those sites. That legislation will be filed in Massachusetts. Within the next six to 12 months, it's happening all over the country. It's really something you should take a look at. Yeah, I wouldn't read into any reaction here in terms of interest. Are you in the right. business? You seem like you know a lot about this. Do you do this for? I'm a lawyer, and I and I do a little political stuff. Good. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. It's fascinating stuff. I'd like to have looked into. I really would. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, from 
my only comment again is uh, if, if these smaller uh, cell uh, forward stations are put in, if it's safer or less safe, because it may provide better coverage to the schools, et cetera. But if it's less safe, then it's going to having a safer solution. Yeah, I understand. Safety is preeminent in all, all that we're doing here. So, any other public comment? Any other comment from the board? I think we have a lot. I think we have a lot of work to do. I mean. Um, the last thing, the, the last thing we want to do is, is shove a project down a neighborhood's throat, um, but no, actually no buts. And um, you know we still have to balance. Sort. I mean we have to deal with the water tower, and then we have to deal with um, removing the cell, the you know the, the carrier stuff off of that while we repair that. So it, it's it, it has to get dealt with. It could be an opportunity to look at more creative kinds of solutions, but. Um, I, I, I hope people leave here knowing that, um, you know, there's no secret plan that we're taking off the shelf and just going to get done. I mean, there's a lot of questions here that just in this conversation that I learned about, I didn't know that you could potentially look at, you know, smaller kinds of things. Um, so I think there's a lot of work to do. Um, I think the public safety stuff I think is really important. Um, uh, from the stuff that I've read, um, th th there really isn't a public safety thing, but I think that when you're going to build something new, it's probably a good idea to take a fresh look at that and just, you know, if we have to bring somebody in here or maybe involve our Board of Health in looking at things or making a presentation, I think that that's important. Um, and in the long run, we certainly want to build anything that's going to be obsolete in five years. So I think it's a lot of stuff to digest and, um, you know, I think you have a commitment from this Board that we're not just going to ram something down. Either. Jerry, did you say the Board of Health would be weighing in on RF? No, I'm just saying is that potentially we can ask them to look. I mean, that, that, I think that's, that's way something. beyond their purview and beyond their expertise. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying it, 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 we well, can bring in somebody else. We can um, bring in a subject matter expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be better. Yeah. Um, Do we have a? I'm sorry. A question for Ryan. The question mm -hmm. on these nan uh, micro towers or distributed towers. I, I know that's not DPW's subject matter, but it might be interesting to include in the conversation. I don't know how we do that, but we should make a note going forward to at least include that in. Mm -hmm. Whether that has a mitigating factor or sorry, did you? Uh, to Mr. Delaney's point, um, there's an acronym DAS that's often used for these micro sites. Um, they're as simple as like an old fashioned automobile aerial mm -hmm. up on top of a telephone pole with a oversized shoebox of equipment that's bolted to the pole. And that's actually a micro site. Um, they're common in urban areas and on heavily traveled arteries in urban areas because towers can't typically be put on like Com Ave in Boston, for example. Might be able to get antennas on top of a building. But you're seeing more and more of these and, and from our experience, the, the networks are gonna be a, a marriage and a combination of these little micro DAS sites in the traditional sites, the towers or the water tanks or antennas on the side of a building or a smokestack. Um, because, for example, the, the four carriers at Bedford, if, if, if they could have just immediately switched to these little micro sites, the little areas on, t on telephone poles, they might have considered that. But all four carriers are just automatically moving on to the new structure for, for, for that particular site. I don't know if that helps. Are those, are those little DAS distributed antenna systems, are they um, individual by vendor? Do you need four of those if you have four sites, or are they also shared? You do, sir. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. And, I, and I'm not sure. We'll have every street coming in here complaining about <laughs> 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 You have to run no wire on the poles to support those also, or not? The, 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 no little, DA, the little DAS? Yes. Yeah. You, they're just repeaters. How do you feed it? You can How probably carry it? the box of equipment, you know, without too much effort, and. And the antenna is just typically three, they four feet from one to the other. You don't have to physically connect them. They, they don't. They, they're not on. They're not on every single pole, every s right. sequential pole. Um, they're 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 scattered. How and does the downlink get made? Downlink. downlink? Th yeah. That has to do with their propagation okay. models that that was talked about earlier. Is a repeater. And, and as a matter of fact, for your particular site, yeah. dollars to donuts that the three or four carriers, however many you have are going to have to rerun their propagation yeah, models yeah, just see. just from moving the antennas, what, a couple hundred <laughs> feet from the water tank? Less than that. Never mind, never mind wholesale 
relocation of, because the, uh, I'm not a radio engineer, but I've been in the business long enough to know how it works. And they basically try to have slightly overlapping signals from any given tower site in their network. So if one of those sites goes away or gets moved, it affects their coverage. We should include that in the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Delaney, for bringing that up. That's a good topic. Any other public comment before we move on? All right, well, thank Scott. you very much. Thanks, Scott. You have a process Andrew. question. So, so the, look, there's a lot of work that needs to get done here from a new, uh, this is sort of a new guy, new guy question. How do we, how does that work get done? Uh, how do we, what do we do from here? Where do we go from here? I think one is we've got to uh, digest what we've heard tonight in terms yeah. of these distributed antennas. Mm -hmm. Two, we've got to understand what the range of options are that could be done with current techniques and what other mm -hmm. towns have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've got to understand, get a rendition of what these things might look like, right. schedule another public meeting, put report on what we've learned, um, come up with a notional schedule if for the water tower component alone, because mm -hmm. that's um, got to be dealt with in any case. Um, and lay that all out in terms of a schedule and put it, present it to the public. Alter alternatives. Will you be assigning homework, giving us homework? Uh, not tonight. Uh, we'll no. staff, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The staff. These guys. Yeah. This is beyond our subject matter expertise, yeah. for sure. But we would ask them to like propose what, what do you think the next steps are, uh, a rough timetable for when we'll see you again, and wh where do we go from here? Again, to echo um, what you've said, we're certainly going to have to digest what has been given to us tonight and then uh, go from there and if it means hiring another you know consultant specific for certain things we will this is very specific and it's a specialty beyond mm -hmm. what your normal engineer would do um, so we would have to look at that and then moving on from there we maybe we do some renditions and renderings and look at some other alternatives and placements and and, and go from there for the folks in the audience, I, I hope you take away tonight that um, we're treating this seriously and we're listening to you as if we were living on Beacon Street. Um, this is a public utility that's there today. And we're just trying to find a way to preserve for the public safety aspect what's there in the least disruptive way we can. We've heard some clever conversation tonight that we want to factor into it. Um, and again, this is not our sub my subject matter ex area, so I can't comment. But we'll we'll do the diligence. We'll be back here with some of the proposals and concepts that we've talked about already. Yes, sir. My deaf guard, 37 Robert Street, Pete and Ryan. As far as the water tower, are we looking for storage or are we looking for gravity? Because if we, if we start <coughs> from the ground up as far as storage, we can increase the capacity. Yeah, we, we need to keep the height. The whole height? The height of the tower. You can't lower that? You can't. No. No. That's what dictates the pressure in this tower. Uh, 110 feet, feet ahead. If right. anything, we'd like to go up five feet just to help. Well, there's, there's some headspace in that. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, and thank, thank you for being in touch. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I'm going to recess while folks empty out here, just real quick. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Am I next?
in the packet as well, but I pulled them out just so you have them. All right, Sharon, it's all yours. Okay. So on June 21st, we issued bonds, and the um, issuance was for the $3 million settlement for the high school. Um, it also was for um, three point, I think it's three million four sixty for water main work, and then two million, two point four million for sewer station work. And when we started to work with our bonding agent, um, we discovered that for the high school debt, um, MSBA does owe us one point four eight right. nine million dollars. And we originally thought that we needed to use that to reduce the excluded debt because we thought some of the debt we had outstanding was the MSBA. Right. But in 2012, we had refunded that debt and a, a, a lump sum payment was made by the MSBA to pay off their portion. So that 1.489, based on what bond council's view and the bonding agent's view, was really to be put applied towards the settlement. So that's why we ended up banning, because they said, well, okay, now you just need to do your final reimbursement and the MSBA will pay you. Because right. they didn't pay us because we withheld from the contractor. <laughs> they right. didn't pay their portion of the right. bill because we didn't pay our portion of the bill. But now we paid the bill. And so now we've paid the bill, so now I have right. to put in another reimbursement request. The, the other How whole- How much will that be, Sharon? 1,489. So that's why we banned for 1,490. Uh, um, because they said you can't borrow the $3 million because you have this money that's coming, coming in, and they it. did not agree with us that we had borrowed it. Because originally we did borrow for the MSBA. I think that it, the first issuance was for $35 million, and it was partially our portion, but some of the MSBA, and that's not uncommon. They would just pay you back with the interest and such. Um, and then they changed the way they did things, and they wanted to buy out of the, the loan when we did our refunding because we got a great rate. Um, and so at that point, I think they purchased out and I think we thought we still had a portion of it that was MSBA. So for that reason we had to ban half of the money. Um, so we will end up borrowing less than what we told town meeting so that will probably be a rescinded portion of that authorization. A ban is always less than a year? Yeah. It's temporary debt, yeah. And we should probably get the money from the MSBA soon. The problem I'm having with, the, with that last reimbursement is um, because we had litigation, if you're Back then, we had an agreement with the MSBA. I don't think they do it anymore, but if you're successful in litigation, um, they'll pay a portion of the litigation. Well, well there we were, were definitely portions. We weren't successful. We were not successful. We were not successful, but there were definitely items that were awarded in our favor. Right, right. Right. So um, Ray Mears was working with PMP to try and identify the, the costs related to the items that came out in our favor so that we could put that on our last reimbursement request. Mm. It's been six months, we're still waiting, so I don't know. You don't have the bill from the lawyer yet? We have, we've paid the bill, but they have to actually break it down to the portions That's of time that has to do with so the So we item. paid it before we realized that we had to have them actually yeah. react. Yeah, they actually have to break it down to a different level to get the MSBA that, to pay. That could be a long time coming. So I don't know if we're gonna see that anytime soon, so I might be forced to do a reimbursement for the settlement, and then once we get something from PMP, do a final with the legal. To apply for an additional reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So if we tie the reimbursement directly to the construction portion mm -hmm. for now, that should cause a timely reimbursement. Yes. Because um, honestly, based on our experience with that law firm, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of correspondence going from Bramier's to PMP. Where are you with this? We need this. We want to do our reimbursement. Because MSBA is chasing us. Are you done sending your reimbursement requests? You know, have you sent yeah, they want to be out. They want to be out. Is there a drop dead debt from, uh, from uh, MSBA about, um, like, if you don't have your project closed by a certain amount of time, you leave money on the table? N not that I'm aware of, no. I don't think so. Edward sure would be pumped up. Yeah. Well, they, they knew that we were in yeah, litigation. So, so last yeah. year we had submitted a um, reimbursement signature. request yeah, request for anything that happened since our final audit and forward. And um, when they received that, they asked the question, are you done with your litigation? Have you settled it? And I was, at the time, I believed we were close. There was a lot of talk that we were trying to settle it. Um, so I said, I think that we're getting close. Um, they're definitely making offers back and forth. Um, and so they told us that they would wait to pay us because they wanted it to be the final reimbursement and close out the project. So they don't want us to do it in two pieces. They really wanted this to be the last reimbursement, which is why I've been waiting. But at this point where we've banned, I really want to put the reimbursement request and let them know that we're waiting on the yeah, This kind of comes back to a, you know, a theme that we talked about earlier. I mean, we, we pay
paid this lawyer. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things we should have an expectation as a result of that payment. Mm -hmm. And the same you discussion know, is our first discussion today, right? Think yeah, it is our first discussion. Yeah, it's exactly way tied that back we're to, this, to, look to the at earlier it, discussion. Sure. I mean, it's definitely a different way we're asking him to look at it. Like, how much time did you spend on this item that we were successful in? You know what I mean? Break his time down to, do you know what I mean? So I, think I know that exactly what you mean. I think it changes how he has to look at things. It's not just, oh, this is all the hours I spent. He's got to kind of pull out everything that was related to well, the Well, there's a certain accountability now that he, I'm sure he's very uncomfortable with. And I'm sure that's why you're going to see it delayed. And I think we have to be very firm about this. Yeah. And the litigation cost for those items we s succeeded on is reimbursable, and that's the issue. That's what you're asking them to, to itemize right. on the bill. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the litigation expense. And to refresh our memories with the total litigation cost, not the settlement, just the litigation. How portion. much was it total? We've never heard that number. Never heard what the representation was. The last was. time I saw it was upwards of that 700000 for the litigation, but I'd have to revisit The, the most recent one. But this is a second law firm. You I mean the KMP? We need to look at the, we, it, there would be a, we should, since the town actually pays that bill, mm -hmm. um, it would be nice to know. What it costs. Because that question is going to come up. Yeah, for We've sure. never heard what it costs us to defend ourselves. Front to back. Yeah, two because the, the costs are in two different places. Some of it was charged to the project when they when they first started litigation, and then at some point we were like, well, right. we need to that start taking proper, that's correct. not the proper we're way. Talking to about do the it. escrowed funds they were charging against. There, there's a there's a capital project that's set up yep. for the high school project. Right. So when they started litigation, what they were doing was charging the legal bills to the capital project, correct. which I don't think was technically right. correct. So then when <coughs> Bob and I were looking at it, he said, let's let's pull this out and start charging the legal bills. Well, there's a long list of what was done incorrectly. Mm -hmm. But then when the funds were escrowed, when there was, um, they were charging, there were legal bills charged against the escrowed amount as well. So that the total, there was two million escrow? in escrow. I don't recall there being an escrow. Um, when, there, when the payments were withheld, mm -hmm. the funds that were withheld were escrowed, right? The payments that would have went to the contractor that we disputed were put in escrow. Yeah, escrow. Not to my no. knowledge, they were all kept into the project. The money just remained in the project, but because they were spending that's the, the that's, legal that's money. That's what the process should have been. So that's what should have happened, but they actually were spending the money on legal. I heard that it was escrowed at town meeting. You're saying it wasn't. I, I'm, I'm okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yes. Not to my knowledge, so, no. You know, we're talking about $2.3 million that was withheld. Mm -hmm. And when all the dust settled, we had $800,000 left in this escrowed account. Correct. So it went somewhere. It now, some it of went it went into, into yeah. capital you know, work yeah. that was unfinished or had to be redone. So I do know some of that happened. And there was definitely a settlement with um, that Brackett and Lewis, Lewis Correct. Lucas has done. Yeah. I, I think it there was needs to be, uh, this comes back to a demand for transparency around how public funds are being spent. And, uh, you know, we need to get clear answers as to how that was accounted for. Well, now that the settlement. And I don't think you have them, Sharon. I don't think that, I don't think you've, Really well, the, the system that we have, the new <coughs> system that we have, went into place like 2008, so the project was almost done. Like, so it's all in an old system. All I have is the actual invoices Printouts. and the boxes of invoices that make up that project because they were in an older system. So some of it's in units, but most of it is not. So that's what makes it a little harder to track. Sure. You know I, what I, I mean? clearly understand what the problem. What exactly happened, you know. Do you think you have a, a good chance at coming up with assessments, maybe not precision, but is there a way to go back and kind of construct what where that was money went? Yeah. For sure. There's, we have the stake? paperwork, so it well, just it's time <laughs> to go through What's it. What's at stake in terms of reimbursement once we I don't know. That's and that's the part that's the, that's well, the maximum reimbur reimbursement we are due is the one point four eight million there was a cap on the cost. Yeah, MS yeah the MSBA is only gonna pay the one plus, million plus the cost plus of the litigation. Legal. Okay, the legal that's was the separate on our successful on our success. Sure. We weren't successful for a lot, though. But we were, were successful, successful incidentally, right. to, the, to yeah. the number. Right. It was very small. But how they, much, so do they attribute, when do they break it down like, okay, well, you were successful in 10% of the, the thing, so you're going to, so exactly. it's going to be 10% right. of the legal bill. They so had that master judge working were, on were. different claims, and then so he they, would award one or the other. Those rolled out in pieces from the master, okay? so. You, so we'd see those during the time that I was chair and, and read in. Um, you would see some of them come out and be favorable to us, and that might be $80,000 worth of asbestos or something. Yeah. And then there would be 
600,000 in the other direction. And I'm, you know, I'm exaggerating. I don't know if I'm exaggerating or not exaggerating. I'm, I'm trying to. The order of magnitude, I don't think you're exaggerating. Yeah, yeah. I think it was very small in a relative way, which was kind of why the, you know, the firm urging watching the master's reports come out is like, get this thing done. This is yeah. not going yeah. in our direction. And the bill, you know, the interest tab was literally $1,000 a day. Yeah. On the whole thing, yeah. I mean, so every, you know, every week that went by was. Well, so the, a lot, half the settlement is interest, so. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so that being the case, that was why we had to do the ban, so I figured I'd explain that. So on the June 21st, we issued 6.6 6 million or 6 million 645 in bonds at 1.503. Can fifth you say that number again? So the <laughs> press can hear it? <laughs> what? <laughs> the interest rate that the town 1.503. We have a AAA bond rating, so we get some very nice interest rates here, Redding. AAA. <laughs> yep, and we got a premium of eight hundred and seventeen thousand dollars there, or just under eight hundred and eighteen thousand. So we borrowed less. We reduced our borrowing by the premium. We always do that. Um, the high school um, project had language in the actual motion that said that if we received premiums on our issuance, that we would reduce the borrowing and use it towards the project. Yep. The water and sewer did not have that language, so I'll have to put the premium in a reserve, and then when we go to our next town meeting, we will ask town meeting to apply the premium to the project. It's just a formality, but right. and we, we can make have language um, put in place that will make that an automatic for all projects going forward and, and the projects that Reduce have been authorized. Yes, right. so that we don't have to do that every time because we reduced how much we actually borrowed by the premium just because it made no sense not to. <laughs> so. Certainly. Um, and then we, we issued the ban at 1.074 with Eastern Bank, and we got a $1,200 premium. What else do you need to have here? So essentially, I told you all you needed to know about the high school project and why we had to ban. So what has to happen now is, John, you have um, motions um, that um, need to be pass those to the members just so they can refer to them and I'll, I'll need to sign those so pass them back after and you have to sign as the secretary and right. then the town you, sign, you just sign one of them just no, I sign all four I it's all four but those are for you to read why oh, okay why no <coughs> you've got a purple tag that somebody hopefully back. will move to suspend the reading of it do I have to read this all or not I don't know. I've never been here when you guys done it. So oh, okay. have you ever read the whole thing? You did it last year too. You had. I'll, I'll read the whole thing just to be safe. If you yeah, want. I would. Is, is <laughs> I don't know if you can. Okay. So I'm going to start. My first part's my certification. Ignore that. Move that the sale of the six million six hundred forty-five thousand dollar general obligation municipal purpose loan of two thousand seventeen bonds of the town, dated June thirtieth, two thousand seventeen, the bonds to Fifth Third Securities Inc. At the price of seven million four hundred forty-nine thousand nine hundred eighty-one dollars and ninety-seven cents, and accrued interest, if any, is hereby approved and confirmed. The bonds will be payable on June fifteenth of the years, and in the principal amounts, and bear the interest at the respective rates as follows: Your twenty eighteen amount seven thirty-five thousand, interest rate four percent. Uh, Your twenty nineteen amount seven hundred twenty thousand dollars, interest rate four percent. Your 2020 amount $720,000, interest rate 4%. Your 2021 amount $720,000, interest rate 4%. Your 2022 amount $715,000, interest rate 4%. Your 2023 amount $715,000, $715, interest rate 4%. Your 2024 amount $715,000, interest rate 4%. Your 2025 amount $715,000, interest rate 4%. Your 2026 amount $445,000, interest rate 4%. Your 2027 amount $445,000, interest rate 4%. Further voted to approve the sale of a $1,490,000, 1 1.25% general obligation bond anticipation note of the town dated June 30th, 2017 and payable December 15th, 2017, the note, to Eastern Bank at par and accrued interest plus a premium of $1,201.93.
further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the bonds, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated June 14, 2017, and a final official statement dated July 21st, 2017, the official statement, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted, further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice and sale and preliminary official statement dated June 16th, 2017, and a final official statement dated June 21st, 2017, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted, further voted that the town treasurer and the board of selectmen be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver continuing and significant events disclosure undertakings in compliance with SEC rule 15C2-12 in such forms as may be approved by bond council to the town which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the bonds and notes as applicable for the benefit of the holders of the bonds and notes from time to time. Further voted that we authorize and direct the treasurer to review and update the town's post issuance federal tax compliance procedures with such changes, if any, as the treasurer and bond council deem necessary in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the bonds. Further voted that each member of the board of selectmen, the town clerk and the town treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. And I think the rest has to do my certification. So I don't, that's the end of the motion. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Or can I have those back? Second. I have a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Five zero. Um, anything else for tonight, Sharon? You guys have to <laughs> sign every one of these tab papers. What's the difference between blue and purple? I don't know if um, there's any difference. You ran out of blue. I don't think there is. Like, there's a line for all of these. All right, so. One of them, so. I, okay. The one thing that has to be signed by Dan is what the motion is. That's what I'm doing. And there are four copies of the motions because. There's what? four copies of the motions? Yeah. Signing four. I think it's all identical. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just sign them. Okay. There must be a need to have more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Four Not four normally four. involved in all the signing, so all right. I don't have the answer for why there are four. <laughs> why don't we do that at the end of our meeting today, right. rather than just leave it right there? Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. I think yeah. we only have one other topic uh, for this evening, anyway. Okay. Any other topics for Sharon before? Signing it. Do you want to? Um, you want to stay here and collect these back? I assume, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll be done. I think all we have is the extension of. Uh, yeah. We did everything else. Climate right. committee, and we're done. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because I get a sure. confusion. Sure. We have liquor license. <coughs> that's, that's that's on my staff. We, we already ought to sign those. We're already done. Right. Um, that's, I a share. Bob, that's a Bob thing. Yeah. I think the old share. gentlemen, the only other topic for tonight before we adjourn is the um, extending the sunset clause for climate advisory committee. As we discussed earlier, this group is due to sunset at the end of the month. They're working on a, an advisory. Um, just ran out of my head. <coughs> the proposal to um, come up with language regarding a, uh, a, a regulation for plastic bags. Uh, for plastic bags, and in light of that, I'm proposing that we extend them to uh, at the end of this year, to December 31 of 2017. At which point we'll evaluate the body of work and decide what mm -hmm. to do at that point. So, if there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion to, to extend that sunset clause. Dan, oh, I buried all my motions. Okay. Move that the Board of Selectmen extend the sunset clause for the Climate Advisory Committee to the date of December 31st, 2017. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Could I move to make an amendment to the motion? Sure. To just, uh, so in, in looking at the work that the Climate Advisory Committee is doing, plus this, the hazard mitigation plan, which we're, is not going to go away in the near future, uh, like it or not, as far as applying for grants. Um, they speak about a couple times the, the hazard mitigation plan talks about incorporating climate change impacts 
and climate change, climate resilience adaptation components into the mass town's mass. Talking about the HEP mitigation plan we just looked at. Tonight. Right, right. I mean, my I guess my point is I think there may we the motion. The, the amendment that I would like to make to the motion is to to just extend them for two years to July 2019 uh, because I think there will be a need uh, for the Climate Advisory Committee moving forward. Okay. And, I, and we got an email from uh, the chair, David Zeke, who is here, um, and he could summarize the projects that they have moving forward. Um, um, I have no objection. David, do you have any comments briefly? Um, well, I, I sent that email to each of you, but, but you know, the, so we have some ongoing things like the Earth Day Fair, you know, which is an annual event. We have weekly uh, news articles that we submit to the newspapers, and they almost they get, get published weekly in the in the local newspapers. Um, those those are just ongoing activities. I think they're well received in the community. The um, the the projects that we have in our backlog were things we've talked about earlier before we got into the the bag ban discussion, which was about, um, and I think we've talked about them here as well, about uh, looking at solar installations, possible solar installations for the town of Reading, looking at possible um, <clears throat> electrical vehicle charging stations, uh, that that in, in, in cooperation with uh, RMLD. And I think it just in general, right now, I mean, the, the committee is, is a very healthy committee. We don't have problems having, you know, members on the committee. Uh, we have people who show up at the committee who are not members but are interested. And so I think with that level of interest and that level of, of uh, you know, activity, it's, it's just good to keep the thing, keep the committee going and not, not risk suspending it and, and, and maybe wanting to do something later. Yeah, the, the purpose of suspending is just give you time for the short term work. I don't think there's any particular statement about um, the particular date. Um, the Climate Advisory Committee, like the ATRAC, is advisory to the Board of Selectmen. And one of the things um, uh, we've got to do a better job at as the Board, I think, is giving guidance to these advisory committees as to what topics we want to be advised on and what work they ought to be doing. I think that's been pretty lax on our part. So one of the reasons to kind of keep this closer in on our part is to get some past tension on our part to decide what guidance we're going to give you. It's not necessarily a comment on the advisory committee, but rather the advisor, us. Mm -hmm. How are we going to behave? Um, anyway, there's a motion on the floor. Do, I'm sorry, Dan? Amendment. Yeah, comment on the amendment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have two uh, committees that are facing sunsetting. Uh, one committee is uh, looking at changing its potential form of government, uh, what it's going to report under. We don't know where that's heading. Uh, this group is, uh, has been very stable and is not looking at those kinds of changes. So I'm just wondering. Um, what do we not know tonight that we'll know at the end of December that would cause us to hold back? From uh, that, that's unknown and unknowable. I think this is yeah. more just a question of uh, getting it passed so the group can continue its work and we'll take it up again at a time when we've got a little bit more bandwidth to worry about it. It's no more okay. scientific than that. Any other questions? So we have an amendment to the motion. Uh, any, do I have a second on the amendment? Um, I second it. Okay, we have a second on the amendment. Any other further discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment to move the uh, sunset date to, I guess it would be June 30th, 2019. Uh, raise your hand. Those against? I guess that's us. <laughs> Gotta abstain. Why don't you abstain then? Okay, uh, we're back to the original, excuse me, back to the original motion. All those in favor of the um, original motion of a sunset uh, date December 31, 2017, please raise your hand. Okay, five zero. So um, David, we'll continue your powerful work, your, your important work, we'll, we'll yeah. talk again at the end of the year. I, I just, just before you leave, Mr. Chair, if I could just yeah. say, Dave, before you leave, I hope you don't leave here thinking that the board doesn't value the work that you do just because we didn't, yeah extend you two years, um, that discussion will come. And I think um, you do provide a lot of things. And, and, and not only do we, as since you report to us, um, you know, want to give you direction, I would like and hope that the committee gives us, the board, some things to think about um, going forward, about things that have. we should be working and on. So have. I don't want you leaving here thinking that the board doesn't appreciate the work that you do. We do. Um, and, and that I look forward to having um, that discussion at the end of the year and, and, and looking at some of the things that you 
want to forward the town on. So thank you for that. Thank you, David. Uh, any other business to come before the board tonight? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? All those in favor of the mo move motion to adjourn? 5-0, and it is at uh, 9.33. Good night, everybody. Sharon, what do we have?